Right, I think we're live. Um, as always, let me know in the chat if you can hear me and see me all. Welcome to part five of Paul Plays Through Too Many Bones. So this is continuing from my playthrough series that I did in January, where I was basically learning how to play the game. I'm still learning how to play the game, I think. I think this is one of those games that you will always be learning how to play. Um, but I'm basically continuing uh, my series. So instead of playing through one a week, uh, I, the, the plan is that I'm going to be doing this once a month on the second Wednesday of every month. Uh, and this is the second Wednesday of February. So yeah, welcome to my fifth video on Too Many Bones. Not counting the ones I did prior to this year. They don't count. Now, I was almost ready to go, everything was all set up, and I went live, and I suddenly realised I didn't have the dice tray, and I didn't have the progress tokens, and I didn't have the dice out, so I frantically got everything ready. Um, so yeah, there's going to be a little bit of rearranging and setting things up. Uh, we've got the cameras set up, I think, uh, except that's not going to work now, because this is in the way. Oh, right, I had it all set up perfectly, and then I, f and then I forgot this is a dice game, and it's got dice in it. Anyway. We're going to crack on tonight. Uh, we are playing the solo game tonight. I'm going to be varying these playthroughs between solo uh, and multiplayer. Um, so it's going to be it's going to be solo tonight. Uh, hello to everybody in the chat. James has got snow. So anybody who has snow is banned from the chat. Just just to let you know, because um, everybody seems to have snow apart from me. Um, so yeah, solo playthrough tonight. Uh, I'm going to be playing Boomer. Now Boomer is a character that I've played twice before, and I'm not completely comfortable with it yet for a couple of reasons um so i've decided i want to play boomer again tonight and after tonight that might be it i might be comfortable with boomer but if we just have a look at boomer's chart um there are skills that i haven't unlocked yet so i've gone for frag i think i had the big boom i haven't had stunner i haven't had napalm i've never used smoke screen sonic cleanse or flashbang i've not used the bag of booms or the holy hand grenade and I've not used the search for 325. So there's, there's part of this character that I haven't actually uh, finished exploring yet. Uh, James Cartwright says he doesn't have snow. Right, James, me and you, you're, you're okay. Um, <laughs> so, and tonight we're gonna to be playing against Duster. Now Duster uh, is a tyrant from the base game, but actually comes back as a gear lock in Undertow. Now Undertow was my first introduction to this game. So it confused me a bit when people were saying that Duster was a tyrant. So this is the tyrant that we're going to be playing against tonight. It's going to be a long one, so make, your, make yourselves comfortable. Um, we need 10 progress points, if I just show you here. Uh, can you see that? Yeah, you can see that. Uh, so we've got 13 days to do it in. That's normally about 8, 9 or 10. We need 10 progress points. We normally need 7. So it's going to be a longer session tonight. Um, I'm going to be counting the days on this. Uh, and I'm going to be counting the progress tokens um, with little beads, because I don't have the map. Okay, so I'm going to be counting tokens with these. Uh, Robert is here. She's his wife's favourite character. Okay, cool. Right. Uh, I'm going to probably play it really badly. Now, a few people on various forums, thank you very much for the help today, have told me this is going to be tough. Uh, Boomer is quite difficult to play solo. So what I'm doing is I'm playing this on the easy setting, the adventure mode. So I start with two extra health. So I start with five instead of three health, and I start with one training point already, and I'm going to spend it in decks. I was thinking of spending it in attack, or, or body search, or something else, but I've gone with the decks, um, because you need the decks to be able to roll these characters, uh, these these dice here, because uh, Boomer starts with these these four dice already. Okay, we are good to go. Um, as I said, I've not played against Duster before, I don't even know how Duster works as a tyrant. So I'm going to leave that as a bit of a surprise for where to get when we get to the end. And what I'm going to ask for tonight from the chat is, obviously, rules help. If I get anything wrong, rules-wise, or if I get stuck and I ask for any help with the rules, please let me know in the chat. Um, as far as tactical advice goes, please can you hang fire on the chat with the tactical advice tonight. Um, it's been really appreciated seeing all of the messages coming in, but it's got to a point in the last couple of playthroughs where... I was basically being told exactly what to do on the chart. And I kind of, I know I need help. I know I'm not very good at the game and I know I've asked for help, but I kind of want to, it's a fine line between obviously getting advice on how to play the game and literally me not playing the game at all and just 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 reading the chart. So yes, 
Rules are advice definitely uh, in the chat, but tactical advice only when I ask for it, if that's okay with you. And I'm fully aware that I'll make really bad plays. And if you're watching this not live, if you're watching this afterwards, um, and you have any tactical advice for me, please feel free to tell me afterwards. Um, I'm more than happy to get an essay on, here's what you did wrong and here's what you should have done, because I want to learn and I want to get better. But during a live show, it, it's, it's quite difficult. And yes, dexterity, I'm learning. Ah, 10 minutes ago, I, I was almost going to change my mind. Anyway, one more thing before we get started. Sorry for the lengthy intro. This is not a sponsored video in any way. Obviously, I quite like the game, but these videos, me giving up uh, time when I should be working or spending time, uh, personal time, they're only made possible thanks to the support of the Patreon campaign. So my Patreon campaign uh, gives me the financial flexibility to be able to take time away from the paid work to do this stuff. So a huge thank you to all of my Patreon supporters um, for making these videos possible. And if you do like the content that I make and you want to support the channel, patreon.com forward slash gaming rules. The Too Many Bones contests have ended. Um, I did run two contests in January for people to win uh, copies of the game. That's over now, but thank you very much for supporting me. And let's crack on. Right, day one. Oh, where's my water gone? <laughs> I'm going to need a refill. I need a little bell to call Vicky so that she can get me, um, get me a refill. Right, now what I've done is... Um, after speaking to various people, mainly Scott, uh, I'm using a different set of age three cards. Age three cards? Days one to three cards, okay? So I'm still using the core set for everything. I'm using the core set, gear lock, core set, baddies, core set, tyrant. But the first th three day cards, I'm using three age of tyranny cards uh, to mix it up and give some variability. Kabuki Kids here in the chat. Good to see you. So off we go, day one. And hopefully, shall I use the side camera? Yeah, I'll use the side camera, because that, that's quite good. I think that looks quite good. It's focused okay. Right, sleeping is out of the... I, I need to adjust my physical position so that I can actually read it. Sleeping is out of the question. The night before a journey like this, nerves are firing on all cylinders and the adrenaline is pumping. And then there's the things you see, or at least think you see. When you wander Obandar in the lonely quiet of night, a hooded figure, small in stature, leads a chained creature into the council chambers. The beast is making all sorts of guttural noises. Both figures are gone as quickly as they appeared, and at this hour, it feels more like a dream. Maybe it's time to chomp on a s on a what on a snorbin root and get some sleep. Okay, so we have a choice. We can follow the creatures. If we do that. We're going to get loot. Uh, and this becomes a persistent card. Once during the tyrant battle, before the tyrant rolls its dice, prevent it from rolling its tyrant die. Discard after use. Or hit the hay, get a training point. Now, either way, we get a training point and a, day, uh, and a progress marker. But <clears throat> I quite like this. This is basically, it's going to give us... This is going to give us an advantage in the final battle. So I think I'm going to go with this one. Okay. Why is it an appropriate day one for Paul? Why, why is it appropriate? <laughs> oh, insomnia. Yes, I see. I get it. Thank you. So yeah, I'm going to choose the top one. So we're going to follow the creatures. Now, uh, training point is better than loot, but I'm worried. I'm already worried about the, the final battle. So I'm going to take this card. So I basically keep this, and at some point during the tyrant battle, before the tyrant rolls its dice, I can prevent it from rolling the dice. Okay, so we're going to get a training point, and we're going to get a progress point. Now for the progress points, because I don't have the map, I'm going to be using these little gems. So we have one progress point, um, and I get a loot. So the loot cards are all here. Uh, Kabuki Kid says, always wanted to try this game. Yes. I did for a, for a long time. Uh, yeah, it was a game which, when I first heard about it through friends of mine, Barbara and Matt Allen, uh, and they told me about it, and I looked at it, and I was like, wow, this looks fantastic. Um, yeah. Right, okay, we have a loot card, and we have... What have we got? What have we got? We have a flare distraction. So, before facing a battle encounter with battle cue, body points reduce it by three. That's not bad. That's not bad. Okay, so we're going to keep that. Um, and yeah, this video is more of a playthrough because I've done... 
If you're interested in learning how to play the game, I would recommend going back and watching the first video I did in January, uh, which was very much a learning game, and it was a tutorial game. This is going to be more of a playthrough. You're going to see it being played, whereas the first video I did in January, I actually teach you how to play it step by step. Right, so we've got that. We get a progress point, and we're going to keep that card. So what are we going to spend our progress point on? And this is always the difficult thing, is I've bought the extra point of decks. That was the right move. That was definitely the right move. The question now is, I'm not going to buy a grenade yet. I know that. It's do I buy a point of attack? Do I buy another health? I think I'm okay for health. So I'm, I'm considering buying another point of attack. Or do I do body search? I think I'm going to go with the attack to start with. Uh, so you have to roll to see whether you can increase your attack. Um, so I'm going to roll, and I've already got an attack of one, so we're going to train in attack. Yeah, no herbs this time. Or what was the other thing that I got? Um, the meat, that was it. <laughs> okay, I didn't roll the bones, which is good. That means I have increased my attack by one. Training point, done. Okay, I'm already loving this game. It, it, you know, games are great, and games give us so much enjoyment when they play them. And there are certain games that as soon as I start playing it, Oh, yeah, I, that, that, that's, if you can put that into words, um, that's how I feel when I'm playing this game. That's day one done. That is the end of day one. We have a progress point, we gained a training point, we gained a loot, we're okay. We're on to day two. Day two, and I'm taking the next card from the stack. Bog meat, that was it. Okay, next card from the stack is... Early in Exile. The old gear lock is shouting. They're insane, mad, no principles, none whatsoever. Don't do it, don't go. You're cleaning up their mess. They broke day law. Forget the songs, forget the legends. It was us. We meddled, we meddled, we meddled. We... The rant is broken up by a coughing fit, one that seemingly, re seemingly refuses to end. By the first bend in the road, his rants have begun to draw the wrong kind of attention from the woods. So, we have a choice. We have three choices. Right, option one, ignore the stranger. If we do that, we have a fight. The body, the body points is going to be two, because it's day, uh, day two, one character. But at the start of each round, any is reset. Reroll Gearlock, any die, and re... Oh, right, okay. But if we do that, we have a fight, and we get, we get a training point. Or, we can use the stranger as bait. <laughs> if we do that... We still have a battle with baddie points, but we get loot instead. Place a stack of two health chips on a melee gear lock starting position to represent an extra unit. It cannot move or attack, but baddies will treat it as an opposing unit. Okay, so it's an easier fight, but we get uh, fewer rewards. Or we believe the stranger. You quit and go home. The battle queue is made up of your conscience. Game over. Thank you for playing too many bones. <laughs> Brilliant. Okay, um, that's really good. I like, I do like the sense of humour that they've got in. So uh, let's choose option three. Thank you very much for watching, and I'll see you next month. No, um, I'm going to choose option one. Okay, I, I'm going to have a fight. Uh, we're not, we're not going to go for this one. We're going to go for option one. So we make a battle queue. Uh, the battle queue. Oh, I tell you what, I should have done. Um, yeah, I forgot the day one scouting of better loot. Thank you very much. Let's just go back, end of day one, I should have done something, and I was going to scout. That's what I was going to do. So I'm scouting at the end of day one. That's a six. Okay, that is a six. This is a gaming rule special dice, limited edition, until I make more. Um, that is a six. That means I can scout from any of the stacks. So I'm actually going to scout on the five point baddie stack. Okay. Uh, and this is the baddie. So... Do I want to put that one on the bottom of the deck or the top of the deck? Now, I'm starting, when I first started playing this game, the whole concept of scouting did, it made sense to me, but until you know these baddies, and I'm pointing to them, you can't see them, until you know what these are, you've no idea. The first time you play the game, you scout it, you draw it, I now have a choice. I can put it back on top of the stack or put it on the bottom. But if you don't know the game, it's it's a meaningless decision because well it's not a meaningless decision it's a decision that you have to make that you don't understand now that i've played it a few times 
I'm going to have a think about this. So hardy means any turn this unit takes damage to its hit points, total is reduced to one. So it can only ever take one point of damage per turn, max. And compound means it gets tougher and tougher and tougher as it fights. Okay, that's bad. Compound is bad and hardy is bad, but I'm going to leave this one on top because I think there are worse ones in there. And again, your choice. if you are watching this to learn how to play the game, I'm no expert at the game, but um, what was I going to say? I've lost my train of thought. But uh, the decision about whether to leave the body on top of the stack or put it to the bottom is based on a number of factors because every character plays differently. So I'm playing Boomer today. Boomer plays in a certain way. Certain bodies will be better against Boomer or worse against Boomer. I'm not sure about this one, but I'm going to put this one on top of the stack. Um, Scott is asking me, did I say what body types I have in the game? I didn't. So the body types that I'm using in this game is all of them. Okay. So with Duster, you actually play with all five types of buddies. Bearing in mind, I am still only using the ones from the base game. Um, okay, so you see, the, you see the size of these stack. Well, you don't. This is, this is a stack of chips that's that high. Okay, but these are only the buddies from the base game. Um, you can mix all of the other ones in, and I will start doing that possibly next month, possibly the month after. I'm not sure. But anyway, I'm putting that one to the top. That was day one. Apologies for that. <clears throat> I forgot to do that at the end of the day. Right, we are now on day two and we're having a fight. So we are ignoring the stranger. We make a battle queue of buddy points, which is number of gear locks multiplied by the day number two. So we use two one point buddies. Let's move the dice thing out of the way just for a minute. Uh, okay, off we go then. So buddy number one is uh, an orc scout. So it's got three health. One, two, three. Uh, it's got raiding. Now raiding, let's just remind ourselves, this unit gains one extra attack die for every additional orc type buddy on the battle mat. So let's hope there are no more orcs. This is a uh, ranged creature in lane one. So it goes there and it's got initiative value of four. Round one. Okay, next, buddy number two is a griffin yearling. So it's on initiative five. Initiative five. It's got two health, but it has flight. Uh, and it's a melee creature in lane two. Okay, right. My initiative. Here we go. Mark's going to give his opinion regardless. Yes, that's fine. <laughs> so my initiative is three. So, oh no. So I'm going after all of these two. Right, there we go. Where am I going to start? That is the question. Now I'm a melee, no, I'm a ranged character. <clears throat> so I want to go somewhere where the Griffin Yearling can't get me on the first turn of the game. So I'm going to go there. That's fine with me. Okay, right. We are ready to start. I've got the side cam, which is looking very colourful tonight, I have to say. Um, probably because I've got the colour settings wrong, but there you go. Um, Right, okay. Initiative, purple. It is the griffin yearling first. It moves two towards me and it can't attack me, so one, two. I'm getting nervous now that I'm playing a rule wrong. And I don't think it's just been, it's been a couple of weeks since I've played. <laughs> and uh, yeah, now normally it would roll its attack dice, um, but it doesn't have any, it doesn't have any defense dice and it gets nothing if it rolls bones, so I don't need to roll it. Right, that's that done. Next is the Orc Scout. It's ranged, so it doesn't need to doesn't need to move, and it's going to attack me for one dice. I might just put the dice here. Uh, don't forget to re-roll the initiative after each round. Thank you very much, Edward. Yes, at the start of each round, Innie is reset. So I ah, that's good for me. Re-roll Gearlock Innie dice and replace Baddy Innie dice. Perfect. That's really good. So it attacks me. It deals me two damage. Ouch. That's not a good start. Half dead. Is this going to go? Where's this going to go? I'll put it there. Right, okay. Um, actually, I can move these out of the way. I'm just experimenting here. If I move them out of the way and leave the dice, bo the dice there, can you then see it? No, you can't. But if I move it around, 
Uh, is this going to work? I don't think this is going to work. No, I can't get the camera. Can't quite get the camera on. Um, which is a bit of a shame. I could put it there and I just roll on that side of the of the board. Yeah, that'll do. Okay, so two damage to me. Uh, we're done. Uh, it's now me. Right, so what am I going to do? Well, I'm a ranged character. I've got four decks. Oh, should this be flying now? Flight. At the end of this unit's turn. Yes, it should be flying. <clears throat> so that's now flying. I can't attack it. Yeah, okay, right. So I've basically got four dexterity. I have two attack dice. So I'm going to use my two attack dice and I've got two defense dice. So I could be using these, but actually because I'm down on three health, I am totally using some defense dice. Yeah, okay. I'm going to put that there because we don't need that for the moment. Okay, here we go. I'm going to roll. Okay, so good news is I've got two defense on here. So that'll be handy. I'm going to put that in my active slot. Uh, I've done two damage. Uh, and I've rolled the bones. So the bones is going to go there. Uh, and the two damage is going to go come off the Orc Scout. Oh, it's... Now, it's only got one health left. And I have this backup plan, which is... Throw odds, thump target for one damage. I'm, I'm going to do it. I am going to use the backup plan. I'm going to remove the bones. And we're going to kill the Orc Scout. Yep, the Orc Scout is gone. Right, okay. So that goes over there. That goes over there. That goes over there. Nice. Okay. Uh, so that's that's that done. End of the oh, so start of round two. We re-roll my initiative dice. Two. Oh, sorry, I'm getting slower. Uh, and then we do the Griffin Yearling. So the Griffin Yearling is going to move and attack, and then the flight is going to come off. And it attacks me for two dice. Uh, that's three damage. Wow. So two come off my shield, and I take one damage. Right, I'm almost dead. <laughs> okay, so my go. Now, I think I'm probably going to kill this. But... I'm, 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 I'm a bit nervous. So, because I've got no defense dice locked. So what I'm going to do is... I am going to roll two attack dice. No, I tell you what, let's let's cheese this out. Yeah, I'm going to cheese this out. I'm going to try and drag this battle on. So I'm actually just going to roll... No, do I want to roll any attack dice? I'm thinking about this because the way that Boomer works is all about collecting these things to make bombs. But each dice that you use costs one dexterity. So if I've understood this correctly, what I'm actually going to do is I'm going to roll two defense dice and I'm going to roll two of these. Now, this is a little risky. It's, it's a little risky because if I don't roll any shields on these, this could kill me. Okay, but this is what I'm going to do. I'm going to spend my four decks on doing this. And again, if you're watching this afterwards, uh, yeah, please, please let me know if you think this was the right... In fact, you can let me know in the chat afterwards, after I've done this, um, whether you think this is a good idea or a bad idea. I'm aware it's a little risky because I might roll complete misses and then it might kill me. But Boomer is all about collecting the resources to build the grenade. So this is what I'm going to do. Two defense dice. I'm not attacking it. Oh, well, this is, this, this is all right. So what I've done is I found three casings I found three elements and I've got one shield. Okay? And I've got a bones. So I could, if I really wanted to, use that bones to deal it one damage, but I'm not, I'm not going to. I'm not going to. Oh, re-roll any. Yeah, I will. I, I did that at the start of round two. Yeah. We're now on to round three. So at the start of round three, I'm re-rolling it, and I'm hoping to get a five or a six. Because then I get another go. I got a four. Okay, so now it's the Griffin Yearling. 
So it's going to attack me for two dice. Okay, so I'm dead. <laughs> okay, so it, it was a risk. Um, it, it was definitely a risk. However, I was unlucky there. There is only one two on this dice. Um, and it, it didn't work. It, it backfired. But that that's okay. Uh, that's me. I think it was the right thing to do. Um, because I could have got three grenades out of this. And that would have been awesome. But... I got unlucky there with the dice. So it's three damage. I have one shield. It's two damage to me. I am knocked out. Uh, the fight is over. So what happens if you get knocked out is that I don't actually get any of the rewards. I should have moved. Yes, because I'm a ranged character, aren't I? Yeah. Yeah, that, that would have been good. I could have just moved three away, rolled the dice, moved three away, rolled the dice. I could have done that. Anyway, I've been knocked out. Definitely could have done that better. Uh, let me just check what happens when you're knocked out. 20, 29. Getting knocked out. Um, full party wipe. If your entire party runs into bad luck and all gear locks are knocked out, the battle immediately ends, but the adventure continues. Skip the reward phase and move directly to the recovery phase. Uh, and we're going to have to heal up. So, yeah, we, we skip the reward phase. It counts as a day but we don't get any rewards whatsoever for that. So that, that's a bad start already. I still think it was worth it. I still think it was worth it. Right, now that goes to the bottom of the stack. This stack is way too big. Okay, bottom of the stack. Uh, we don't get the rewards. Uh, and I, I then spend my time healing back up. Now, what normally happens when you get knocked out is you lose your locked slots. But, as I mentioned at the start, we're playing the game on uh, adventurer mode. And in adventurer mode, if you get knocked out, your dice in your locked slot remain. So normally, on the normal mode of play, they would be removed. But on adventurer mode, they stay. Which actually makes thematic sense, because I found those bits lying on the ground... And then again, if I was knocked out, I would have lost them. Right, okay, so we're moving on. That was the end of day two. Not a good start. We're moving on to day three. I'm going to take another card from the stack. And it is... The grass is always greener. It appears the Ebon controlled the bridge today. Third time this week. Interesting. The bridge master's gruff demeanour is off-putting. He's charging anyone who wants to cross today an arm and a leg. And from the growing pile of severed appendages, his price is non-negotiable. Other options for passage would be preferred. There have always been rumours of a troll living under this bridge, though. Though few, have th though few have chanced an encounter with it. In terms of gearlock achievements, successfully sneaking across the Cibron underneath a bridge might be the greatest of all time. Okay. Oh, I lose the bones. Yes, thank you. So we have three options. We can face the bridge master. We will have a fight with a battle queue of three points. We get a loot and a training point, And we're going to get two training points as well. But at the start of the battle, designate Baddy with the most hit points as the bridge master. Put a d6 on the unit. Both the bridge master has plus one attack. Okay, could do that. Or see you on the other side. Uh, we have a battle queue of Baddy points, but replace the highest Baddy with a... Whatever that is. Oh, it's a type of buddy. Okay, so that's just a normal a normal fight. Or pay an arm and a leg. If we do that, we choose a gear lock. Skills 3, 4, 7, 8, 11, 12, and 15, and 16 are unavailable to that gear lock for the remainder of the adventure. But the history books will forever hail you as the legendary halfling. Literally, you give up an arm and a leg. That's fantastic. We're not going to do that one. I think I'm going to do the top one. And I'm going to... And this is going to go well. I, I, right, this is definitely going to go well, and we're going to, we're going to fix ourselves. We're going we're gonna to fix it, and we're going to fix the problems by doing well on this fight and recovering. That's what we're going to do. We're going to face the bridge master. So we're going to have a battle queue, which is made up of baddie points, which is three. So three baddie points. And I'm aware I could use my flare distraction to basically <laughs> completely pass the, the fight. Um... Oh, this might be a tough fight. 
yeah, this is actually going to be a tough fight. Okay, so <clears throat> the first one, round one, let's see what we're going to face. We are facing a dragon hatchling, three health, it's a ranged creature, six initiative. Okay, it's not a good start. Baddie number two is a clay golem with break. We don't like break, really don't like break. Five health, melee, initiative two, one attack. Okay, the third one is a goblin rioter with mischief. We don't like mischief either. Don't like any of these, to be honest. Uh, this is a melee creature, <clears throat> lane three, on initiative four. Okay, and my initiative... Four. So I go here in the sequence. Right, where do I want to go? I've got five health. Now the problem that <clears throat> I'm gonna have difficulties with this clay golem. Like like I'm gonna have real difficulties with this clay golem. How am I actually gonna survive this? I I don't know how I'm gonna survive this. Because any dice I use to attack the clay golem is going to go. And yes, I don't like how engulf works with break. I may, ha I may have ruled that. We'll see if it happens. Um, this is, this is going to be tricky. This is going to be really tricky. Yes, running around. Running around and waiting till the fatigue rounds. But then again, I've only got five health. I have no way of healing. Yeah, because I haven't, I haven't got my skills. Oh, man. And, at the start of battle, designate a baddie with the most hit points as the bridge master. The bridge master has plus one attack. So we are going to have to designate one of these as the bridge master. And that is the one that we're going to kill. Should I designate the goblin rioter as the bridge master and then just kill it quickly? In fact, am I going to be able to kill it quickly? Not sure I am. Not sure I am. I might be able to be clever with the engulf. Hmm. Which one are we going to make? I don't... Uh, I don't want to make the clay golem the bridge master, but if I am going to be running away from the clay golem, then maybe I do. I don't want to make the dragon hatchling the bridge master. Oh, tricky. Very, very tricky. Oh, yeah, did it have to be the one with the most hit points? Yes, you, you're you right. Okay, so it has to be the clay golem. Thank you for that. At the start of battle, designate baddie with most hit points as the bridge master. Right, there you go. That is the bridge master. That has plus one attack. That, that takes away me having to make a decision. <laughs> I like that. Right, we are in round one. It, it, oh, no, I've got to... Where am I going to go? I'm going here. Hmm. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, so I'm going to go here to start with. Okay, right. Here we go. I'm, yeah, I'm going to need to roll bones and I'm going to have to unlock various points of my backup plan, aren't I? Okay, so yeah, round one. Uh, this attacks. One dice with engulf. That, that's very simple, but this this could be this could be huge. Oops, because if this is two damage, yeah, I was really unlucky in the last fight. One one damage. Okay, so that that's okay. That's average. One damage. My go. I I'm gonna need the defense. I'm absolutely gonna need the defense, and I'm absolutely gonna need two attack. So two attack and two defense. But what am I attacking? Do, do we go for the Goblin Rioter in the hope that we get lucky and the hope that we kill it? Yes, we do. I'm going to attack the Goblin Rioter and I'm going to use these dice. So two attack, two defense. Off we go. Come on. Oh, look at that. 
Oh, look at that, you beauty. Have I said that I love games with dice? Um, three damage, which kills the Goblin Rioter. So that has gone. Sayonara. And I've rolled two bones. Now the two bones goes in there, which means I can save them. And if I get four, I can throw ends, which is three damage. The other thing I've never done in any of these playthroughs yet is actually level up my character to an eight plus one. I still haven't done that in any playthrough. Right, we are done. It is now the bridge master. The bridge master moves two. Uh, so I'm going to move it. Now, if, I, if I'm right, I think, I think I am allowed to move the bridge master there. I think that's totally allowed. Let me know in the chat if that is allowed. Rather than moving it here, because that is still one away and that is still one away. So I, th I think I'm allowed to move the bridge master there. Let me know if that is allowed or not. We're going to go on to round two. And it is the dragon hatchling. Um, so it's attacking me with one dice. Yes, that is allowed. I thought so. Thank you. Uh, how do you denote in eight plus one? You actually flip over your character to the other side. Can you tell the difference? It's got stars around the edge. It, it's, it's barely noticeable. It's very subtle. Right, okay. So the dragon hatchling is attacking me and it's done one damage. Now, unfortunately, I didn't roll any defense, so I take a damage. That could be costly. It could definitely be costly, that. Okay, so my go. Now, if I don't if I don't move two away, it's gonna hit me. So here's the thing. I've got four decks. I want five decks. Can I have five decks, please? Can I buy an extra deck off eBay? Um I don't like getting attacked. But I also, I need to kill this dragon hatchling. So what, what I could do is actually just do two attack and two defense this turn and try and get rid of the dragon hatchling and, and, and take the damage from the clay golem. and then start running away from the clay golem. Now, the, the, the official rules as written are that if the clay golem is next to me, when the dragon hatchling breathes fire on me, the dragon hatchling's attack breaks, and then it can no longer deal damage, right? Which is, I think, is a nonsense rule and should be errated. Um, but that's technically how the rules work. So I could use that to my advantage and let the clay golem attack me and then let the dragon hatchling attack me, and then the dragon hatchling's breath suddenly disappears, which, yeah, which doesn't make sense. Um, well, it doesn't make sense to me anyway, thematically. So, yeah, okay, so what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna go with plan gamma four, which is to stay where I am and roll two attack and two defense, and I'm gonna target the dragon hatchling. There you go, okay. Well, 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 look at that. The dice are working in my favour tonight. So we have three points of defence. Let's lock those bad boys in. Uh, and I've done three damage. Three damage is enough to kill the dragon hatchling. Thank you very much. Okay, dragon hatchling gone. Now it is the troll, uh, not the troll, the clay golem. Clay golem moves one and attacks me. I've got this. Absolutely got this now, he says. And the dragon, it's roll the bones, so it does me no damage. Right, that's it, round three. Okay, I say I've got this. <laughs> Remember, any, the, the, what break means is that any attack dice used against it are lost. Okay, so basically, whenever I use my attack dice to attack it, that's it. I, ha I no longer have any attack dice. 
Um, but what, so what, I, what I'm going to do is I, I'm going to have to stall it out and fatigue it to death. But I've only got three health and it's got five. So I need to get four bones in order to activate my throw ends backup plan. Now, what does Bluff Bomb do? That moves it, doesn't it? Do I have any healing? No, I don't have any healing. Ugh. Right, okay. So. It's my go. And the other option is that I just move three away. If I move three away, it can't hit me. I could move three away and roll my dice. I can't roll any defense. Oh, this is tricky. This this is tricky. I missed an attack die for Gollum. Oh, thank you. Yes. Thank you. The Gollum is actually a super Gollum because it's the bridge master. So it rolls two attack dice instead of one. Okay, so I'm down to two health. Thank you, Scott. And I didn't mean that in a <laughs> in a sarcastic way. I mean, thank you for reminding me of the rules. Right, so that, that's changed things. I'm down to two health. Okay. This is tricky. This is tricky. Hang on. No, no, no. I've got... Um, Forget that. I know the chat's probably shouting at me. I've got defense dice. There you go. Right. Okay. So we're good. We are good to go. I'm still on three health. I lost one of my defense dice. Yeah. I don't take damage because I have defense dice. Okay. So the fact that I've actually got two defense there, I still touch and go. It is still... I'm going to play it safe. I'm going to use my, I'm going to use three of my decks to go one, two, three. Okay. And then I'm going to use my other decks to just roll this. Yeah. Yeah. That's what I'm going to do. I was going to use my other decks to roll this. Okay. Here we go. Let's see what we get. I got a two. So what that means is I can use, um, if we just look at how Boomer works, I think this is right. I can use two of that, two of that, and two of that. I now have enough stuff to make two grenades. But the fact that I haven't got any skill dice for grenades means I can't actually use any grenades. But that's how that works. I now have two grenades. Right, okay. Uh, so there you go. That is my go done. Now we do the, the, the bridge master. The bridge master is just going to move two and I can choose where to move it. So I'm going to move it there because that is the best for me. And then we go to round four. Okay. So in round four, now if I move one, it still can't, oh no, it can get me. I'd have to move two. If I move two, it can't get me. Yes, I've got these grenades. How do I use them? Uh, boom. <laughs> so that's two of my decks used. Uh, I think I'm going to go for the attack. Or do I go for one attack and one defense? I'll go for one attack and one defense. So I moved two. And now I'm going to use one attack and one defense. Okay, I don't know if this is the right thing, but but yeah, tell me tell me afterwards what you think I should do. But this is what I'm going to do. Two points of movement, one attack, one defense. I could, if I really wanted to, take this die off and then re-roll it, but I'm not going to. Right, let's see what we get. Okay, now that... Ah. Okay, so that that's okay, because an attack die is used for bones doesn't count as hitting the creature. So I've not lost that die. And the one point of defense goes in there. Okay. Right, that's me done. I've got three bones, which means I can use the bluff bomb ability, which is select an occupied position that th that unit is immediately moved to an adjacent position of Boomer's Choice. So I can basically move things around if I want to, but I'm not going to. I'm going to try and get... I need the fourth, bo uh, I need the fourth bone to survive this. Okay, now it is the clay golem. It moves two. I'm just going to move it one, two to there. Okay, round five. We are one round off fatigue rounds. Okay, my go. Uh, 
<laughs> I'm going to have to attack it, aren't I? I'm going to have to attack it at some point. But... Oh, this is so tricky. Okay, I'm going to do it again. I'm going to move two. One, two. So it can't hit me. I've got two points left. I'm going to remove this defense die and re-roll it. And I'm going to roll one attack die. So this is what I'm going to do. One attack, one defense. And remember, if the attack does damage, it's lost. Bluff bomb can... Uh, Boomer can bluff bomb herself. Interesting. Oh, hello. <laughs> well, this, this is interesting. I have five bones. I have never had five bones before. We are so close to getting in eight plus one. We've got to go for it, haven't we? We we absolutely have to go for this. That is the end of my go. I've, I've got five. I could, if I wanted to, uh, use those five bones and get untargetable. Or I could use four of them to throw ends and deal three damage. And then another one that would be four damage. Hmm. We've got to try and go for an eight plus one, haven't we? Do you have to use the attack die if it had done damage? I th I'm, no, I don't think you do. Um, yeah, any die that you roll, unless it says that you must use it, you don't have to use it. So yeah, I could have rolled damage and, and not actually get it. I, I'm going to try and go for the innate plus one. So it moves two. That is the end of the round. We're now going to the fatigue rounds. So at the start of the fatigue round, I take a true damage. The clay golem takes a true damage. I am down to two health. <laughs> This is tense, and this is only a day three fight. This is insane. Right, my go. We need to roll, we need, we need to try and get the innate plus one. So I am rolling two attack, and I'm gonna roll, I'm gonna roll one defense. I've run out of defense dice. Get some more defense dice. I'm gonna roll one defense dice. Come here. Okay. Now, if I don't move away, I'm going to get here. I'm going to have to move away. Okay. So we're going to go back to the original plan. I'm going to move two away and I'm going to roll one of each again. The chance of me getting a bones is actually... Is that 3%? 50% chance. No, it's about 40-something 40, 40 percent chance of me getting a bones on one of these two dice. That's okay, I'm going with it. We are, we are going with it. Here we go. Two points of dex to move, one attack, one defense. Okay, so it's not what we wanted. not what we wanted at all. Do I use that one to deal it damage? Or do I save it in the hope that I roll a two? There's only a two on the... No, I'm going to use that one. Okay, so whenever you use an attack die to deal damage against something with break, the attack die is exhausted. I now... My attack is effectively reduced by one, but I have dealt it one damage. It's down to three health. And I'm going to lock that in. Okay, it's go. It moves two. That is the end of the round. Next round, it's another fatigue round. We both take one health. Okay, now if you have a look at this, if you can see, I am on one health. It's on two health. Whether I get killed by it this round is irrelevant because I die at the start of next round anyway. So I might as well just stay where I am. I am going to unlock both of my defense dice so that I can roll them again and roll one attack dice. So I am going to move just for a laugh. Okay, but this is what I'm going to do. I'm going to re-roll the two defense dice and one attack dice. This is the best chance of me getting a bone. And all I need is one bone. And then I get in eight plus one. 
Wish me luck. Got it. We got a bone. Okay. And I dealt one damage and I got a defense die. So let, let's think about this. Let's, I've never done this before. This, this is super exciting. I have dealt it one damage, which I am going to do. I am going to deal it that one damage that comes off there. I am then going to put the bone here. Now, you can't have six bones, but you can temporarily to get in eight plus one. So I've never got in eight plus one before. So I am just going to read the rules on it. In eight plus one, page 11. Each gear lock starts with it. Right, your gear locks in eight can be upgraded by using six bones on your backup plan. Once upgraded, this also lasts for the entire adventure and its effects are explained on your gear lock reference sheet. Play with the non-star side of your gear lock chip face up until you upgrade to an 8 plus 1, then flip it. Right, so here's the choices. Because, yeah, exactly. This, this is what I'm thinking, Mark. I could right now spend these six bones and I would upgrade to an 8 plus 1. And I flip my character over and I get my an 8 plus 1 ability, which is <clears throat> resourceful scavenger. In addition to scavenger benefits, uh, which is starting with these four things in. Uh, Boomer may also add plus one to each of her element casing and fused roll results before locking the dice. And on her bones, she may uptick that component to, to one. Don't quite know what that means. Because there's no... Oh no, there is a bones. Right. <clears throat> so it makes my scavenging better. Okay, that's what I could do. And I have never done an in 8 plus 1 before, and this is my first chance in five games of ever doing it. But if I do, I die at the start of the round. Because the fatigue is going to get both of us, and I lose the encounter. So after all that, I don't think I'm going to do it. No. I, I, I can't do it. I cannot lose this encounter again. So I'm not going to do it. I am going to forego my chance to get in 8 plus 1 and I am just going to use one bone <laughs> to do one damage to my target. Those all slide down. I've got five bones left but you can only do one backup plan per turn. So I use my throw odds. Done it. But I, at least I've won the encounter. That was, that was brilliant, right? And I think, rules-wise, I think I did it correctly. Okay, so we didn't get the N8 plus 1, but we do get all of the benefits of this card here. So we chose the top one, which means we get a loot, we get a training point, and we get two more training points, and we get a progress point. Okay, so progress point goes here. I am absolutely exhausted, so what I'm going to do, and I'm out of water, I'm just going to go and get a top up of my water. I will be back. Have a think about what you would use your training points on. Let me know. Right, I'm back. So yeah, that felt, <laughs> that felt like the end of the night final battle. And that was only day three. So I've got three training points and I've got loot. Let's do the loot first. Uh, the loot is utility part. On your turn, unexhaust any one die. Okay, that's quite nice. Uh, oh, and as the, as the end of game, I am definitely healing up. So here, here's, here's what we're gonna do. We've got three training points. Well, I'm definitely buying the frag grenade, right? That's one training point. That is a no-brainer. Um, secondly, I think I'm going to buy an extra hit point. <laughs> it's my second training point, okay? Now, for the third one, do I go for body search? Do I go for smoke screen? Do I go for... 
I mean, Sonic Cleanse, Smokescreen and Flashbang, you can have any of them. And this is the thing, I kind of, I know what the best ones are because of what everybody said, but also there are ones that I haven't used before. Um, Sonic Cleanse is good against poisoning. I don't think we're going to come across those. Um, Smokescreen, the next number of times the baddie targets a unit with an attack or skill, it will miss. Smokescreen seems pretty good. Uh, and Flashbang disables baddies. So that's pretty good as well. I might go for something a bit, but they, they all use, they all use grenades. What does Stunner do? Stunner. Place a stun effect. Okay, that knocks a baddie out for a turn. Hmm. Big Boom we might not need because there's not going to be that many things on the board. Although the next day is going to be day four. There's going to be four baddies on the board. Yeah, fun stuff that I've not done before. Um, so, I mean, the body search allows me to go for the bigger boom, which then allows me to go for the search for 325, which allows the holy hand grenade to be even more awesome. So yeah, I think we're going to go body search. Okay, so there's the three training points. We put one into health, one into frag, and one into body search. Right, there's my three training points. We are done. That's the end of day three. I'm going to heal up uh, to my new health of six. One, two, three, four, five, six. There you go. We're on six health. Uh, that is this done. So we've gained another progress. Yep. Yep, we're good to go. That's that gone. Right, day four. Okay, so that's the first three days of the easy encounters done. Now we're going to the random ones. Right, day four. Whew. An issue of lung capacity. 34, 35, 36. How long before I drown in this bog? My ill-advised taunting landed me here, cornered in this soggy cesspool with no one to blame but myself. Thankfully, I remembered that most Eben have an unnatural aversion to water, if you can even call this water. Yet, there, there they sit at the water's edge with all manner of sharp and pointy objects. 42, 43, 44... The opposite bank is far too large, far too, uh, too far to swim to, and I abandoned my gear behind a boulder on this side. Maybe I can reach out and grab one of their spears. Okay, so we have choices. 66, 67, 68, grab it. We have a fight, four body points. Reduce by two the attack stat of, one, of the first baddie to enter lane one, and increase your attack by one for this battle. No skill dice can be used in the first two rounds. Okay, or go for the gear. Battle queue is four body points. No skill dice can be used for the first round. I think I'm going to go with this one. The, 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 the rewards for both is exactly the same. Two training points and a loot. I quite like my attack stat being increased by one for the whole battle. So I'm going to go with that one. I'm going to choose the top option. Right, okay. So we have a battle queue made up of four body points. Here we go. Baddie number one <clears throat> is an orc peon. Uh, let's move the water before I knock it over. So it's got three health. It's a melee creature. It's on range one, uh, lane one, and it has no... Sp oh no, it has rage one. So if it's, if it's damaged it gets angrier and it gets more attack. So uh, I'll do the initiatives in a minute. We have a Troll Brute. It has got Thick Skin 1 and Careless. I will read up what they do in a minute, but I think I know. It's got three health. Um, that is a melee on lane two. Uh, on lane three, we have our favorite Clay Golem. Did I mention how much I've hated Clay Golems recently? If I haven't, I hate Clay Golems. And we have a hardy compound kobold tracker in lane four, which is a ranged creature. 
uh, put that in the wrong place. That needs to go there, that needs to go there. Okay, so that's those done. Um, reduce by two the attack stat of the first baddie to enter lane one, which is this one. So this orc peon is actually stuck in the mud. So I'm just going to put that on there. And my attack is increased by one for the battle. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to put one of those on there to represent that my attack dice is increased by one. Okay, so initiatives. The orc peon is on three. Uh, the troll brute is on one. Uh, the clay golem is on two. And the kobold tracker is on six. Wow. Right, okay. And me, my initiative. Two. <laughs> so slow. Right, okay. There we go. Where am I going to start? I've got six health. Don't get cocky. Well, that orc peon can just be completely ignored. Uh, what do we need to get rid of? We need to get rid of the Cobalt Tracker uh, because Compound means that it's going to get stronger and stronger and stronger for the entire battle and it's going to take two attacks to hit it. So I think we want to be away from the Clay Golem. Oh yeah, you're right. I can go ahead of that one. Thank you. I forgot about that. Yeah, I think I'll just go there. So what's going to go before me? Uh, that's going to go, and then that's going to go. Oh no, what I could do is I could start over here. Then when I move that, I could put it there. Yeah, let's do that. Let's let's let's. Let's manipulate the rules a bit. Um, so, okay. Um, right. Okay. Round one. Cobalt Tracker attacks me. It is round one, so it's got one attack dice. I don't have any defense yet at all. And that's a bones. So that's nothing. It missed. Did me no damage. Okay. That's good. Now it's the blue one, the orc peon. I'm going to move it two to there. Uh, and it can't attack me because its attack is reduced by two. Uh, now it's my go. So we've got four decks. Uh, and I probably don't want to move. And I don't want to use my grenade. Or do I? Do we want a grenade? No, I think I'm going to wait. I'm going to wait for the grenade until things get closer. Yeah, I'm going to wait. Okay, so yes, the colours the colours a bit wrong uh, in that I've got the saturation turned up too high on the camera. But if it looks good, that's fine. If you compare it to that, uh, that kind of looks a bit washed out, doesn't it? Um, why can't I grenade? I can grenade. So here, it's 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 here. I've got a grenade. Oh, you're right. You're right. Sorry. No skill dice can be used for the first two rounds. Thank you. I forgot about that. Right. Well, that makes things easier. Can't use any skill dice whatsoever. So I've got three attack and two defense. So I'm going to stay where I am. I'm going to roll my two defense and I'm going to roll two attack. Or do I make it three attack? No, no, no. Yeah. So I'm going to roll two attack, two defense, and I'm targeting the kobold tracker. Thank you for the reminder on that. Okay, <laughs> here we go again. I've rolled two bones already, which means I'm going to get walloped. Uh, and I've dealt two damage, but it's hardy, which means it only loses one. Uh, wrong one, that one. Yeah, so it only takes one damage because of the hardy skill. Right, next, yellow one is the clay golem. The clay golem goes one, two, uh, and then the purple one goes one, two. Okay, and that's the end of round one. Round two. Uh, the kobold tracker attacks me, and this time it's round two, so it's two attack dice. This is going to hurt. I have no defense. 
That's one and a bones. So that, that was quite lucky, taking one damage. Yeah, that, that was very lucky. Um, now it's the Orc Peon that, again, doesn't attack me. Now it's me. Uh, I'm going to roll two attack and two defense. And we're going to target the Kobold Tracker again. Oh, roll defense for the troll. I'm always forgetting to do that. Thank you. I am always forgetting to do it. Yeah, even if they don't attack, if they've got defense, they still roll. Because it might have got careless. Right, two attack, two defense. Yeah, that's, that's enough damage. I only needed to do one more damage. But look at this. That's two more bones already. And a two defense and one damage. Well, well, this is interesting. So now it's the yellow one. The yellow one moves and attacks me for one. And he's rolled the bones, which is nothing. Then it's the purple one. The purple one can't get me. So it doesn't, doesn't move. Right, round three. Now, this is interesting. So I, I now can use my skills if I want to. Do I even want to? I don't know whether I do at this stage. I, I don't think I do. I mean, I'm ranged, which means I can attack anything. So I'm not going to attack the clay golem until the end. I'm going to go for the troll brute. Uh, and I'm not going to move. So I'm going to roll one defense die and three attack die. And we're going to attack this troll brute here. Yeah. Okay. And it's got thick skin one. So I think the first damage... Okay. I've just dropped my garg off the table. Am I going to be able to reach it without <laughs> disconnecting my microphone? Bear with us a minute. I'll see if I can reach it with my foot. Yes, I can. Oh. In fact, no. It's not that. It's this one. Um, no, it was that one. Thick skin one. Um, thick skin, ignore the first one damage. This unit would take this turn. Yes, okay. So, um, yeah, is this what we're going to do or are we going to search? We can't body search yet. Yeah, no, I don't think I need to do the body search yet. I think I'm okay. Oh, no, we can body search. So, I could just do two attacks. Yeah, that's what I'm going to do. I'm going to use one defense. Uh, I'm going to use two attack. And I'm going to use body search. Because you can only use body search once something has been killed. And it's round three, so I am allowed to use it. So there's the four. Oh, I'd love five decks at this point. I think my next point is going in decks. Here we go. Okay, so we've rolled uh, one damage, which just takes the shield off. Another bones. Look at this. We're on five bones already. Uh, I've got a one defense, which goes up there. I've done one damage, which is done. And I've got two generic components. If I want to keep this, I think I do. I'm going to keep that. And then I'm going to use one of that and those two to get a third grenade. There you go. Got three grenades. Awesome. That's me done. Yellow. Yellow attacks me. It has one attack dice. It's rolled a bone, so that's nothing. Uh, and then the purple one can't, can't get me, but rolls its defense dice. There you go, I remembered. One defense. Okay, round four. Blue one goes first and doesn't do anything. Yellow one is me. Well, we've got to go for the innate plus one, haven't we? <laughs> We absolutely have to go for the innate plus one. So three attack dice, and I am going to re-roll this defense dice. Okay, here we go. Come on, we got the six bones. Well, what a, this has been a fascinating game. I've done three attack, one defense goes off there, then one comes off the thick skin, then I actually deal it one damage. Okay, so this troll brute is down to two health and ding in eight plus one. Thank you very much. I don't care whether it's any good or not. 
I am now my first innate one plus one character in all of my games of Too Many Bones. I think that deserves a Jaffa cake. That absolutely deserves a Jaffa cake. If anybody has any Jaffa cakes at home, it's time to celebrate. If you don't have any Jaffa cakes, go and buy some. So, I'll finish it after the fight. That was my go. Yes, that was my go. Okay. Yellow. I'm being attacked by the clay golem. One damage comes off my shields. Uh, the troll brute can't attack me but still rolls its defense. Roll the bones and it's careless, which means it takes the damage. Lol. <laughs> Round five. Blue one first, does nothing. Yellow is me. Right. So we're an eight plus one. Yay. Um, eh, it's not over yet. There's still quite a bit to do. Simon doesn't know what a Jaffa cake is. Go and Google it, Simon. <laughs> it, it, it's one of these, but, but go and Google it. You can, you can find out all about them. They're very nice. So, what are we going to do? We are going to... I think we're just going to have three attack and one defence. Might be a bit overkill. But no, that's that's okay. Three attack and one defense, targeting the troll brute. This should get rid of it. Should. Yeah. No bones now. All the bones have gone. We've had too many of them. Okay, that's that done. That's gone. Yellow one attacks me for one. This clay golem is uh, is chipping away at me. One damage comes off my shields. Okay, next round is round six. We are in the fatigue rounds. So everything takes a damage. And at this point, the Orc Peon is now two attack because it's angry, but that counter means its attack stat is reduced by two. So I still don't think it does any damage to me. Uh, it's now me. Um, and at this point... I am going to use all three attack dice on the clay golem, fully aware that these are going to break. But I think this is the right move. It's either that or get rid of the orc peon, but the orc peon is going to die in two turns anyway and not do anything to me. So I think this is the right move. I'm going to use this. There we go. Jonathan's here in painting. Thank you very much. For joining in, what are you painting? We are on day four. It's been an emotional roller coaster to say the least today. Is it day four or day five? Did I forget to progress the day counter? No, I think we're day four. Yeah, we're day four. Okay, here we go. Okay, now I'm going to keep the two defense. Remember, you do not have to use the attack dice if you don't want to, but I am going to use them all. Or am I? No, I'm not going to use this one. So that is not going to get used. So I've dealt it three damage. And because it's got break, those are gone. But I've dealt it three damage. That would kill it. No, that's okay. That's okay. Because it now hits me for two, which comes off my shields. And then that's the end of the round. And the next round is fatigue. One goes off there, one goes off there, one goes off there, the clay golem is dead. That's why I didn't attack it or kill it, because now the orc peon does nothing, and then it's my go, and basically I've won the encounter, um, but I might as well roll this one, and one attack and two defence. Okay, that's what I'm going to do. We've rolled two bones, brilliant. Uh, and we've rolled a one on there, which I can keep, or I could use this backup plan to roll it again, I think. Reroll any unused scavenger die rolled this turn. Yes, so I rolled it, 
I haven't used it, so I'm going to re-roll it with that backup plan. Oh, and I've dealt one damage. And I got a bones, which is, <laughs> yeah, no good. Done. That's gone. Encounter is over. The encounter has been won. I come back here. Those go back here. That goes there. That goes there. Whew. Right. So at the end of the encounter, what do I get for it? A ja apart from a Jaffa cake. Oh, remember plus one to components. Thank you. So I would have actually kept it. What have I done with the dice? I've put the dice over here. Yeah, you're right. Sorry, I forgot about that. So I would have actually kept that dice um, and put it on two. Because I rolled a one, I would have up tick tick to two. Thank you. I'd forgotten about that. I wouldn't have bothered re-rolling it at that. Or would I? No, nah, I wouldn't have re-rolled it at that. Okay, so we get... What do we get? This. We get two training points and loot. Right, okay, so let's have the loot first. It's a reinforced buckler. Now, isn't the reinforced buckler like a, a completely broken card that's like way, way too powerful? I think it is. Is this the one that people take out of the game because it's just too good? Anyway, I've finished my Jaffa cake. I'm going to spend my two training points. I'm going to have one of them on decks. Uh, yes, it is good trading fodder for bog meat. <laughs> bog meat is definitely broken. Um, there was another reason during that playthrough that I got rid of the reinforced buckler for the bog meat, which I will uh, talk to my patron supporters about on Slack la uh, later on. Um, but yeah, there was another reason that I, I got rid of it at the time. So that's one training point done. What am I going to do with the other training point? I think I'm going to put it into bigger boom. I'm going to try and progress up this. Or do we go to the smoke screen? <clears throat> Let's go to the smoke screen. I've, no, I've not done this before, so we're going to go with the smoke screen one. <clears throat> Excuse me. See what happens. Now, flashbang. Yeah, flashbang's quite good as well, isn't it? Because it disables something. And where's the rules for disabling? Weren't they like hidden in the rule book somewhere or something? Where's disabling? Can somebody let me know where the rules on disabling is? Because I remember we struggled to find, or I struggled to find it last time. Is it on? Is it on here? Yeah, disable is not on here. So where, where is the rules for disabling? It's not in the index. Reference sheet. Is disable on the garg? I'm on the garg. Can't find disable. Disable is not printed on there. No. Disable rules are on the character sheet. Character sheet? Oh, right. Okay, they're on here then. <laughs> uh, ah, here we go. Disable. This unit's skills are suspended for the entire battle. Ah, right. It just gets rid of their skills. It doesn't, it doesn't get rid of them completely. Oh, it's quite nice though, isn't it? I'll tell you what. I'm going to take that. I'm going to take flashbang. Because the way that these skills work is that uh, you can take any of them. If there's a star, you can just buy it straight away. Whereas if it's got an arrow, you have to buy the thing before the arrow, before you buy the thing at the end of the, bar the arrow. Right, we're going to do that. That might not be the optimum move, but I don't care. I'm, I'm going to experiment. I'm going to learn. I've spent me two training points. I've got me loot. We got the progress point. We are done. That was day four. However... I need to decide if I'm keeping the buckler. Now, I'd be foolish if I didn't, because it is apparently way too good. 
So if we keep the buckler, see the utility parts is amazing for the frag grenade because it means I can throw a frag grenade, I think, let me just move this this way a bit. Yeah, I think this means I can use a frag grenade and then use the utility parts to get it back and use it again. So I think the utility parts is fantastic, which means I'm going to get rid of flare distraction. So these, these are the two cards that I'm keeping with the reinforced buckler being an extra defense dice. Now, I, I was confused as to the way this worked. Um, I think the way this officially works doesn't make much sense to me. Um, it, it, it's one that I need to read the, the FAQ on or speak to George about and uh, whatever, because the way that I have been told Reinforced Buckler works, uh, th th yeah, doesn't, doesn't seem to make sense. So, end of the day, I'm going to heal up because I'm down on three health. That is the end of day four. Okay, so, whew. I can move back to the right now. <laughs> so, day four, let's draw the next card. It's another green one. It is the Sky Bridge. It's a cakewalk. At least that's what I tell myself as I hang on for dear life, 1,000 arrow lengths up in the sky. Unfortunately, this ancient rope bridge connecting the two mountain ridges is more ancient than it is bridge. There's an unknown party on my trail, on my tail, and a trading post waiting beyond the ridge ahead. Only seconds remain to make one of two ill-advised choices. I could turn and fight on this tangle of rotting rope and wood. The other option, hightail it to the other side while dodging arrows from behind. If I make it, I can cut the ropes and send my pursuers on a one-way trip to the bottom of the canyon. Okay, need to clear your active slots. Thank you. So the two choices are line them up and try, try not to throw up. We will fight a battle queue of five battle points, but add two to your total, so it'd be seven. But if we do that, we get a loot and two training points. But the battle is restricted to lane one for both sides, and you fight only one buddy at a time. Very interesting. Yeah, because we're on a rope bridge. Or scramble across and cut the bridge. <clears throat> if we do that, we have a battle queue of five. Reveal buddies for every ranged buddy. Roll two attack dice and remove hash hit points from your gear lock. Must survive for encounter success. What does that mean? What does that mean indeed? I think it means before the battle starts, we reveal the, body, the baddies, and for every ranged buddy in there, we roll two attack dice and I take that much damage. And then I have to survive that for the encounter. Now, the good thing for us is we've already scouted. Oh, the bottom option is peaceful. Oh, right. Okay. So we, we create a battle queue. But then what we do is we actually just reveal them. Right. Okay. Thank you. That makes more sense. Now, here we go. This is the five point buddy that we already know is on top of the stack because we scouted. Okay. So we know we're not going to take any damage. But if we have a battle, we do the loot. But I don't need the loot. I've already got good loot. So I think we're right. I think we scramble across the bridge and cut the scramble across and cut the bridge. We do that. We create a battle queue, which is five, because it's day five. This is the baddie. We reveal it. It isn't ranged, so we take no damage. That's done, and we get two training points and a progress. Well, that seems... That seems easy. That seems very easy to get two training points. I mean, worst case... Oh, yeah, if this was day four, that would have been... Yeah, so this is a bit weird. Because on day four, for me, this would have been four baddies. And I could have potentially taken loads of loads of damage. But in this particular case, 
it was just one baddie. And even if it was ranged, it would have only been two attack dice. That, the number of attack dice there should possibly be based on the number of baddie points. But anyway, um, yeah, so we've done. That, that, was, that was dead easy. We've had a stroke of luck. We got the progress point. We're going to get two training points. Um, and we didn't take any damage. Right, well, awesome. Awesome, awesome, awesome. What are we going to do with our training points? <laughs> well, dex is always a good thing, isn't it? Where's my body search gone? Oh, the body search is up there. Now, I could choose to put that back. I think I, I, think I will. No, I might leave it there for now. Um... So now I've got three grenades, I can start using these. Let's let's get the stunner. There's one training point. Second training point is going to be on dex. We're gonna we're gonna have another point of dex. That's gonna give us loads of flexibility now in the fights. Um Yeah. Okay, so that's what we did. That is the end of day five. At the end of day five, I'm on full health, which means I'm gonna scout. I rolled a three, which means I look at the one point buddy on top of the stack. It is a bog pole with poison one. I'm okay with that. Yep, I'm I'm absolutely okay with that because it could be a clay golem. <laughs> and we do not want a clay golem. Right, we are moving on to day six. Are we ready? Shifty's gotta go. Thank you for joining in. Day six is another green one. Trust your gut. Rarely do I second guess my gut, but today might be the day. An inevitable battle awaits me up ahead, but there are two distinctly different camps blocking the way. The first appears to be filled with swarms of underlings and new recruits. The second camp, though less populous, only contains burly and battle-tested foes. While I enjoy hacking and slashing my way through countless ebon and as much as the next gearlock, at some point I will run out of steam. My gut says to second guess my gut, but my gut is also very hungry, and now my head hurts. Okay, so. We have options. Both of them result in a battle. The top one is a battle queue of one point baddies only, so that's going to be six of them. For the first three rounds of battle, any baddies that are defeated are added to the bottom of the battle queue. Okay, so basically there's just a fight of lots and lots of griblies. Or, I've got speed, time for some killing. The battle queue is two five-point melee baddies. But for this battle, you may move up to three positions at the end of your turn. Now, either way, we're going to get another two trading points. Hmm. Okay. I mean, this one is just kiting. This one is, is, is running around. I don't like the idea of this one, where we basically keep killing them and keep killing them and keep killing them and they're going to keep coming back. I think I might, I think I like the idea of this one. Okay, I'm going to ask the chat, what do you think, top or bottom? So the top one is going to be six one-point baddies, but anything we kill in the first three rounds of battle are added to the bottom of the BQ. I could just spend the first three rounds not really doing anything. The bottom one is two five-point melee baddies, so that's tougher, but I can kite them. Bottom will be easier. Bottom, 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 bottom. Everybody's saying bottom. Right, okay, so bottom it is. Two five-point melee baddies. So the first five-point baddie in the stack is melee, and the second one is melee. Okay, right, here we go then. So the first one. Baddie number one is an orc warmonger with raiding and taunt. I've not come across one of these before. One, two, three, four, five, six. So that goes there. That is melee and ranged one. The second one is a goblin sapper with Mischief 2 and Signal 1. Now, we don't like Signal. 
Uh, where's number two? Number two. That goes there. Initiatives. Number one is on four. Uh, and number two is also on four. And my initiative is... Don't know, because it bounced out. Four. Excellent. Right, so I'm going before them. We are on round one of the fight. Where am I going to start? And at the end of every round, turn, whatever, I can move three positions at the end of my turn. Well, I want to get rid of the Goblin Sapper because it's got Mischief. Mischief is a problem for me. I'm also going to be using a grenade. I'm absolutely going to be using my grenade. Uh, oh, and the lack of healing suggests that you won't outlast the top option. Yeah, good idea. Okay, so we're ready to go. So the question about uh, the reinforced buckler, uh, and this is for George and Mark and David, if you're still watching, is um, it says I get a defense die to roll each turn. Now, theoretically, what that means is I could roll it, get two defense. Next turn, roll another one, get two defense. Next turn, roll it, get two defense. That, for me, doesn't thematically make any sense. The way that the defense dice work normally in the game is I can have a maximum of two, and anything that is locked here count against those two. Thematically, I think the buckler should work, and it, it should work like a virtual extra point of defense, that when I roll it, if it's a two, that's it, right? That is the buckler defense die. I can't just keep re-rolling it and adding another two, and then another two, and then another two. Now, guaranteed I do only have three active slots, but yeah. Doesn't cost X and doesn't take into account defense stat. Exactly, exactly. But I think it should be its own virtual one point of dex is, is the way that I think it should work. Not just an infinite supply of defense dice. But anyway, uh, what am I going to do? It's my go first. I've got six dexterity. Wow, I don't think I've ever had six dexterity before. And I'm in 8 plus 1. May add plus 1 to each of her element casing and fused die roll results before locking the die. Honoured bones, you can uptick it to 1. Right, so it basically makes my components better. So, we are absolutely using the frag grenade first. Okay. Uh, now, the frag grenade doesn't have to target my target. Uh, the frag grenade can be used at something other than my target. And I'm just looking at the Orc Warmonger, actually. And I'm deciding whether I actually want to start there or I want to start here. Because if I can, if I can kill that Orc Warmonger early, it's got two defense die. It means it's, it's not going to roll the two defense die. So... Yeah, I think I'm going to use the frag grenade. Now, do we do we use all of these other grenades as well? Do we use the flashbang? Do we use the stunner? I, I don't think we do at this stage. I think I'm fine with using just one. So that costs me one point of dex, but it also costs me a tick down on my um, my grenade counter. So I've only got two grenades now. So that's one dex. I'm then going to roll two defense. Two, three. I've still got, <laughs> still got three points of dex left. Um, I'll have two attack. Yeah, I need more attack. And I'm also going to roll some element things. Yeah. That'll do. And then the reinforced buckler is a free extra defense. Okay, so this is all of the dice that I'm rolling. Uh, yeah, do you need to target for flashbang? Not sure. Not sure, but I'm not using the flashbang this turn. Okay, here we go. I am behind the chat boxes. No, I'm in front of the chat boxes. Am I in front of the chat boxes? No, I'm behind. Yeah, you're right. Thank you for spotting that, Edward. Uh, I'm not going to fix that at the moment, but thank you for letting me know. Yeah, I like to be in front of the chat boxes. Uh, right, here we go then. Oh, look at all these dice. Right, so let's do things. First of all, let's put those two defense dice in. Let's put my bones in. Right, 
Now, we have rolled two damage. Uh, so this is on the Orc Warmonger. So that's two damage on the Orc Warmonger. Okay. Uh, I can keep this and add one to it. If I want to. But no, I'm not going to keep it. I'm just going to put it back. Yeah. Uh, yeah, I'm going to put it back. And then this. This is my this is my grenade. It's got a number four on it. I think that is four damage. So that's four damage. It's a small explosion. Four damage to um, to unit on this position and half damage to all units on adjacent positions. So that actually gets rid of the orc warmonger straight away and deals two damage to the goblin sapper. Right. How awesome is that? But that grenade is gone. That grenade has been spent. But that is my go done. So now it is the Goblin Sapper's go. It moves two. I mean, I could have moved three at the end of my turn, but I don't want to. I'm going to move it two. Um, and then it's got signal one. So what that does is it's going to bring in, at the start of this unit's turn, add a single lesser baddie to the bottom of the battle queue. Triggers for one round. Okay, so we have this at the bottom of the battle queue. Uh, Mischief 2, I think that's only if it attacks me. Oh, no. Mischief 2, remove hash dice player's choice from target's active slot. So Mischief kicks in even if it doesn't attack me. Is that right? How much health does the goblin have? The goblin has four. Yeah, goblin has four health. It should be three. Oh, because it had five. Yes, and it's taken two. Thank you very much. Um, but yeah, so mischief two kicks in even if it's not attacking me. Mischief doesn't trigger. Okay, so it needs a target for it and it, I, it can't hit me. That that makes makes a bit more sense. Right, that's the end of the round. So now the bog, the bog pole appears. Uh, can you tell me in the chat why the bog pole looks like an alien from Alien? Is there a, a reason for that? Is it some in-joke that I've, I've missed? Uh, does it come on three or does it come on one? I think it comes on one, because one is available. Uh, it's a ranged character that goes there. Right, okay. Uh, and that comes in at the bottom of the queue because it's a new monster. So that comes in down there. Finding cat hairs all over the table. Um, right, we're on round two. It's me first. Again, six decks. Do I want to bother using another grenade? I don't think I do. I don't think I want to do another grenade. And I'm happy with taking the poison. It's only a bit of damage, isn't it? Yeah. Okay, so what I'm going to do is I'm going to use two attack dice. So yeah, two attack. Um, I've got my free defense from my buckler. So I'll have that. Uh, I'm going to roll this and I'm going to roll this. Now this is interesting because I only have three locked slots. I guess I can get rid of something. So what's that one? So that's free. One, two, three, four. Um, I can't roll any more defense. I can't roll any more attack. I've got too much decks. <laughs> I guess I could move, but I get three free movements at the end of the turn. So, yeah, I think that's it. Okay, we're going to roll this. Here we go. Okay, so we've rolled some defense, which we can have there. I've rolled three damage, which is good because that's enough to get rid of the Goblin Sapper. So the Goblin Sapper is dead uh, and I've rolled these. So I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to choose to get rid of that die and I'm going to put these in as two and then I'm going to tick them both down to one along with that, which is another grenade, which is three. So I should have used the grenade 
because then I could have had a second one. Yes, I should have totally used the grenade. Um, yeah, there we go. That's that gone. Sorry, now that's that gone. And then the bog pole poisons me. So I'm poisoned for one. There we go. Right, okay. Next round. Round three. Uh, I take a damage from the poison and then the poison wears off. And then I... I mean, I might as well use a grenade because I'm going to get another grenade at the end of the turn. So I'm going to use a grenade. I'm going to use... Um, I'll use flashbang. Why not? Okay, so that, that's one grenade. Uh, and then two attack. Um, and I've got me throw odds. This defense is actually useless. So I'm going to re-roll all of that defense. And there's six. I can use the one wild and keep one of the three at two. Could I? I thought you could... We'll talk about this afterwards. I mean, I, I know what you're saying is correct, but I thought because I only had... Because I only had three slots. Oh, maybe I could have slotted one, used it, and then got rid of it. Okay, right. Yeah, I think that's right. There you go. Right, so here's the dice that I'm rolling. And we're targeting, obviously, the bog pole. And we've hit it with a five. So this is the first time I've ever used this effect before. But what I have done is I have disabled it. Uh, and what that means, if I can find the disabled dice, is that the disabled dice? Yeah, that's the disabled dice. It's no longer poisonous. So it's not actually doing anything whatsoever. Um, I've got three, three shields. I've dealt it two damage, one, two, and I've rolled a bones, which goes there. Um, now, <laughs> we might as well just end it here. Yeah, I'm then going to convert that, that, and that into another grenade. Okay, uh, that should be there. And then what I'm going to do is I'm going to throw odds at it to deal it one more damage. There you go. I, I use the um, I use the flashbang just for fun. Um, but yeah, that was good to see how that worked. I'm actually going to get rid of that one. I don't want to keep that because I want to re-roll it. So there we go. It's starting to come together now. Is absolutely starting to come together. What do we get for that? Uh, we get one progress point, we get two training points and a loot. Right, okay, nice. So a progress point. Uh, I'll do the loot. Fortunate discovery. Now, here's the thing. Can I... So rules question. Can I... Do, do, do I have to replace one of my existing cards with this and then use this? Or can I just use this without actually equipping it to get one of the consumables? That is the question. So Georgia said yes, but I don't know what yes is that is in relation to. Because <laughs> I think I asked both questions. Um, two training points. I'm going to have another attack. Okay. And then for my second training point... Oh, no, I've got to roll to see if I can get attack or not. I need to I need to roll. I can get attack, so I'm going to have attack. Right, and my second training point is going to be, I think, big boom. Or No, I'm going to go for bigger boom. Just because I think big boom is more useful when you've got loads of baddies on the board. I've got five health. Do I want to heal up? I think I probably do. Yeah, I think I'm going to heal up rather than scouting. So, I can't use it without discarding a loot. And George is saying, to get FD, you must equip it first. Right, okay. So, this is the thing. If, if, I, if I decide to keep the utility parts, then I can never have a fourth piece of equipment.
Hmm. Okay, I'm going to get rid of the utility parts and I'm going to equip the fortunate discovery. And then I'm going to use the fortunate discovery to get another skill die that I've never used before, which is either uh, Bag of Booms or the Holy Hand Grenade. Now, Bag of Booms just looks like a better version of Body Search. So I'm going to take the Holy Hand Grenade. Why not? Because it's fun. And I've never had it before, and I might never have it again. So we have a Holy Hand Grenade, which basically does the white number damage unless I infuse it with element 325. So I think that's what we're going to try and go for. We're going to try and go for the 325. Okay. There's my two training points. I have healed up. Yes, three is the number thou shalt count to. The number shall be three. Thou shalt not count to four. Five is right out. Okay. Are we done? I did me two trading points. I did me loot. We did the progress point. That was day six. We are now, uh, I healed up at the end of the day. We're now on to day seven. Now, just as a reminder, this is the card we're facing. We actually have 13 days to do it in. And we have 10 progress points to get. We need 10 progress points to fight Duster. 13 days maximum. We are currently on day seven. I did tell you to make yourselves comfortable. It's going to be a long night, but it's going to be worth it. This is awesome. This is awesome. Right, okay. Where are we up to? Day seven. Yes, let's draw a card. See what we get. Oh, it's a blue one. So just if you are watching this for the first time and you don't know the game, uh, within this encounter deck, which is hidden under this cover card, there are some blue cards. Blue cards are specific to the Tyrant encounter. You shuffle them in, uh, there's either one, two or three, and you never know when or if they're going to come out. And this one has come out. So this is a Tyrant specific counter for Duster. Mercy of the Lost. In retrospect, following this blood trail for three hours may not have been the best idea. The lure of scavenging some loot off an unfortunate traveller was too much to resist with the stakes this high. But make no mistake, a lot of time has been wasted. Finally, however the source of the blood has been found. She's doubled over in pain, wincing and breathing heavily. Get away from me, Duster wheezes. Tunic stained crimson from the bleeding, Duster clutches at what must be a serious wound to her left side. I don't need you. I don't need anyone. You're nothing but pawns of the council. Ooh. So we've met Duster. Right, so we have a choice. Uh, she's a gearlock. So Duster is actually a gearlock. Uh, she's a gearlock. We help our own. If we choose that option, it is a peaceful encounter. We get a training point. Duster must be healed by two hit points for each gearlock in your party, using loot with the ability to heal. Okay, so I don't have that. <laughs> if this can't be achieved, you must take the other choice. Right. So we're having a fight. What if this was her plan all along? Is it a trap? While pondering that thought, another comes to mind. Where did she go? So we're having a fight. It's a very simple fight. The battle queue is made up of seven baddie points. Okay, which is a five and two ones. Here we go. Right, the five is a dire wolf with lashback two. One, two, three, four, five, six. Uh, Baddie number one. Initiative four. So whenever I say baddie number one, um, people in the UK will get what I'm talking about. I don't know if anybody else will. Let me know if you are not in the UK and you understand the reference when I say baddie number one. In that particular tone of voice, not just the words. It's, it's, the, it's the way of saying it. Five, and the third baddie. So this is a goblin bomber. We've not come across that yet. And we have a troll youngun. Has it got break? No, it doesn't. It's careless though. I love the careless ones. <laughs> they go around falling over themselves. Uh, four health, melee, lane three, initiative three. And does anybody in the chat know what I'm on about? It's a classic Blockbusters TV show reference. It's not. It's not Russ, I'm very disappointed. Because Russ is in the UK and Russ doesn't get the reference. 
Well, uh, I'll give you a hint, Russ. Next time you go to a post office and you're standing in the queue waiting to see which counter is next or something like that, that's, that's, what, that's where I'm doing it from. Right, anyway, it's me. We're on six. We're going first. Right, where am I going to start? Where am I going to start? TV show Bullseye. No, no, I do make a lot of Bullseye references, but that's, this, that's not one of them. Right, so let's have a look. Lashback 2. That means whenever that is attacked in melee combat... Oh, five is higher than four. That's what you're talking about. Thank you. <laughs> whenever that is attacked in melee combat, I take two damage back. Now, that, that's good for me because I'm ranged. This has got Mischief 1, which means that's going to be removed, and it's ranged, so that's going to be removing my active dice. So we do want to get rid of that early, and it's only got three health. And we've got all sorts of fancy grenades. Yeah, I got the wolf in a Duster encounter. Yes, because Duster does have a wolf. Right, now, this is at the point. Now, the Holy Hand Grenade is a one-use thing only, isn't it? Yeah. Do we want to use the frag grenade with the bigger boom on turn one? And the answer is yes. We absolutely do. Turn one of the game. Turn one of the fight. And here's what I'm going to do. I've got six decks. I'm going to use three of that to attack the Goblin Bomber. Okay. I am going to use one dex and one grenade to tick down that to use the frag grenade so that's four dex i get my reinforced buckler for free i'm going to use the bigger boom for five dex and i mean this battle could be over in a matter of seconds So I'm going to use, I'm going to roll this die as a sixth one. So one, two, three, four, five, six, plus my free one from the buckler. Okay, here we go. Let's see what we get. Okay, now that's unfortunate that that, the grenade, malfunctioned. So there was me getting all cocky. <laughs> saying that this battle could be over in a matter of seconds and the grenade misfired. Now, normally, skill dice are optional. You do not have to use them, but this is a bone surrounded by red, which means it's not optional. You have to exhaust the die. It's gone. Which means the bigger boom is of no use whatsoever. Um, so that's just going to go back. That is two. I'm going to add one to it because of my innate plus one and make it a three. I've got one shield. Uh, I've got a bones, but I did get three damage. So the good news is I got three damage. By the way, I should have declared the frag grenade was going here and my attack was going here. I forgot to declare it, but that's, that's what I was thinking. So go the goblin bomber is gone. All right, that, that's done. That's that three attack done. Uh, goblin bomber is done. Right, now it is the dire wolf, which moves two. Uh, I'll just move it one, two. Um, can't attack me. And then the troll jungan also moves two. And that goes there. Right, round two. Okay, so change of plan. The grenade goes to the backup plan. Thank you. Yes, it does. It's a bones. Um, so round two. My grenade's gone. <laughs> but. Oh, and I need to roll defense dice for the troll because it's got careless. Yeah, okay, so that's got one defense. Um, it's been an hour and a half since I said I love this game. I love this game. This is just brilliant. What are we going to do? Six decks. We're running away. We're running away from the wolf. We're going one, two, three. Uh, do we want to use another, another grenade? No. But I am going to use the body search. So that's four. Do we want to use the stunner? Is that a five point buddy? It is. No, I think we're okay. I'll just keep running away from it. 
So one, two, three, four, the free buckler, um, five, six, attack dice, but who am I targeting? I think I'm going to target... I'm going to target the dire wolf. Yeah, I'm going to target the dire wolf. Ooh, so I've got three damage, a locker shield, and now this is a new icon that I've not had before, but I have seen it before because I've had this icon on patches when I was playing patches. This is buff HP, and I'm going to take it. I'm going to take it. So this gets locked in my active slot. Mm, okay. And I get three buff HP. So buff HP goes here. I'm going to put it like that so you can see it. There you go. Okay, so I've got loads. And then I do three damage. So that's one, two, three. The lashback doesn't kick in. Okay, right. I'm making this look easy. I don't want to get cocky, but even missing with the grenade... So the wolf goes one, two, the troll goes one, two, and I can just keep running away. The troll doesn't roll because it's got the defense die on. Round three. Am I doing this right? Can I just keep running away like this? I think I can. So yeah, I'll go one, two, three. Uh, the free buckler defense die. Uh, I'm going to re-roll these two defense. I don't need them. I don't need them at all. So uh, that's free. I've moved three, four, five, six, in the hope that I roll bones. Hmm. No, actually, let's just, let's do that. Let's do two attacks. So I've moved one, two, three, four, five, six, plus that. I'm not rolling for my casings. And I probably should do. I can see why multiple grenades now. You want to be throwing multiple grenades each time and then collecting the casings in order to get back more grenades. I'm starting to see that now. But no, we'll, we'll go with this. This will go for now. The troll can get me. Yes, the troll can get me. Thank you. That's okay. I'm all right with that because I've got some defense, he says. Right, well, that's all right. I've got one defense on there. I've done one damage. So this was on the, on the wolf and I've got two more bones. So there's the bones. And do we want to use the bones? Oh, I can use the bluff bomb. I could use the bluff bomb. I've got this buff HP and I've got this defense. I don't I don't need any defense. I'm 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 fine. I'm I'm all fine. We're gonna keep the Um No, I'm gonna use one of the bones. Yeah, I'll just use one of the bones to do one damage to the wolf. So the wolf is down to one health. Okay, right. So now it's now it's the wolf. Uh, the wolf moves, one, two. Uh, and then the troll moves, uh, one, two, and actually hits me. I've rolled one damage, comes off the shield. Done. Yeah, one damage, I had the shield. It's fine. It's fine. Right, next round, round four. Uh, so me, I am going to spend one, two, three decks to move. I am going to roll these two dice for four, five. I've got my free buckler. Um, and I've got one attack dice. And I'm going to attack the dire wolf. There you go. Dire wolf is gone. Uh, with loads of that. That's going to uptick to two. That goes in as three. And then I'm going to spend one from that, one from that, one from that to have a third grenade. There you go, got three grenades again. I want to roll the bones. Um, there we go, right, done. The troll moves to there. 
and then round five. So I want to get rid of it this round, if I can, because otherwise we're on fatigue rounds next round. So three attack, three dice for the buckler. I could stun it. <laughs> I could use a grenade, but I kind of don't want to. I'm happy with three grenades going forward. Um, so let's just roll a couple more defense. One, two, three, four, five, six. In fact, I've got one left. How much damage is that? Uh, well, it's three damage. Oh, look at that. I've got six bones again. So if I really wanted to, I could have an eight plus one again. Uh, no, that's fine. I've done three damage. One comes off. Two more. Then I use the throw ends. Dead. Okay, interesting. Didn't take any damage. The buff HP goes. End of the fight. Yeah, that, that's starting to come together. These characters really do uh, get more powerful as they uh, progress upwards. I mean, I know they do, but the, the ramping up is quite, quite impressive. So we get that. We get a loot. And we've drawn a fortunate discovery. I'm going to keep the fortunate discovery because then I can use the holy hand grenade, then use a fortunate discovery to get a holy hand grenade back. Yes, in eight plus two. That's what we want. And I get a training point. So with the training point, I'm going to go for the search for 325. Okay, there you go. Never had that before. We'll see what happens. Those go back. Uh, I can't have any more than three grenades. So I'm actually going to keep those dice. No, I'm going to unlock that one and put it back there. And the buff HP goes as well. Right, we are done. I don't have Fortunate Discovery as a backup plan. No, I do not. Some of the, some of the gear locks do, though. Right, we're moving on to day eight. Next card. It's a green one. Was there a... Yeah, that was a blue one. Yeah, okay. Day eight. We've only missed out on one day's progress so far. This is a trap of my own making. Too bad and too many. I could never overpower or outrun them. Either this works or my journey ends before the sun sets. The plan? Be my own bait? What could possibly go wrong? The trap is set just as the golden sun is beginning to sink, which I pray helps obscure my hasty work of covering the freshly excavated pit. Now I just need to screech like a wounded griffin stand in plain sight and hope they don't simply jump over the trap before tearing me limb from limb. Right. Both options are a battle. The first option is be the bait. Be the bait. Uh, the battle queue is two five point baddies. As baddies enter the battle mat, roll a d6 for each. On a one to two, the trap does nothing. On a three to six, the baddie is stunned for the first two rounds. That's a 10 point fight. That's fine. Or maybe I shouldn't be the bait. If we do that, we fight again, fighting two five-point baddies, but we have surprise. Don't know what that does. Uh, baddies take one true damage any time they move to a new position on the battle mat, including initial position. Okay. Couldn't I have scouted? Yes, you're right. I could have scouted. Thank you. I, again, I forgot. Let's do that. Let's do that quickly. It's a three. I'm going to have a look at that. It's poison two. I do not like poison two. It's going to the bottom of the stack. Yeah, poison two, bad. Okay, what are we going to do here? I'll leave it up to the chat. Um, which one do you want me to do? Top or bottom? Surprise means they go to the bottom of the initiative. Okay, thank you. So Brian is saying bottom. Again, we're going to make it a bit interactive. Let me know which option you want me to do. I'll wiggle the card around like this while we're doing so. So we have the votes in for bottom, bottom. Brian says autumn. But Brian, you're voting three times. You can't vote three times. It's one vote each. <laughs> uh, Luana is saying top. Kylie is saying top. Simon is saying top. So what have we got? We've got, ignoring Brian's three votes, <laughs> we've got one, two, three, four, five, six for the bottom, and we have one, two, three, four for the top. So it looks like, it looks like the bottom wins it. Oh, Giblock says top, it's six, five, it's close. Have I counted the votes correctly? Brian, 
top, bottom, bottom and hope for melee, bottom, top, top, counting on my fingers, bottom, top, top, top. It's top. Top wins it. Right, we're going for the top. So we're making a, bat a battle queue of two five-point baddies, and as the baddies enter the battle map, we're rolling a d6 to get see if they get caught in the trap. And if they do, they're stunned for the first two rounds on a three to six. Okay, right. <laughs> Brian says he's from the US. He votes many times. Yeah, just don't tell anybody. What's your name? Brian, but I'm wearing a hat this time. <laughs> it's fine. Not like the other Brian. No, he's an idiot. Right, two five-point baddies. First one is, oh gosh. Right. We have a dragon delinquent. Okay, we're going to roll to see if it's caught in the trap. Caught in a trap. It is caught in the trap. So it's stunned for the first two rounds. What does the stunned effect like? St the stunned dice look like? Stun. Oh, it's the star with the thingy what's it? Right, it's stunned. Excellent. It's got seven health. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven. Uh, this is lane one, uh, and it's ranged, and that's in a trap for two rounds. So what I might do is I might put two stun dice on it, because it's stunned for two rounds. Okay, next buddy is a kobold fanatic. One, two, three, four, five, six... Lane number two, paddy number two, melee. Is it caught in the trap? No, it's not caught in the trap. It's managed to break out. So, initiative. That's on initiative six, that's on initiative three. So the blue one's in on initiative six, I go before it. Purple one's on initiative three. Round one, where am I gonna start? Simon's off to bed. Good to see you, Simon. Thank you for joining in. So, Hardy. We don't like Hardy. I mean, it's got six health, and it can only take one damage a turn. Oh, man. So my grenade is, like, useless. Yeah, I'm just going to have to chip away at it. So I'm I'm gonna I'm gonna stay here. I'm gonna sit in the corner. Okay, so let's get the defense up. Um, what am I gonna do with my six decks? Oh, I can stun it. I can flashbang it. Ah, flashbang it. That disables it. That gets rid of its skills, which gets rid of its hardy, and its inspire. Right. Boom, that's what we're doing, literally boom. Using a grenade to use flashbang. Now there are ones and fives on this. I need to roll a five. Um, yeah, so I hope I roll a five. So that's one dex. I've got my buckler, that's an extra dex. Um, I might as well have a bit of attacking because if I can apply the grenade first, That will work. I'm going to roll the casing. So that's free. That's one, two, three, four, and two defense. Yeah. I think that's right. I ticked down the counter for the grenade. I've then got one, two, three, four, five other dice. I'm targeting the Cobalt Fanatic. And that's the free dice for the buckler. Right, okay. There you go. Yeah, what does the holy hand grenade do? It goes boom. Um, it's either an explosion that hits everything or an explosion like the frag grenade, and it can be made better if it's infused with 325. Uh, do I have to have the same target for the grenade and the attacks? No, you do not. The grenade can go wherever you want. Um, so you're right, I could throw the grenade at this. Oh. Good call. 
I like that. Yes. Okay, so I'm actually going to target the Dragon Delinquent and use three attack dice. And then I'm going to use the grenade on the Kobold Fanatic and I'll attack it next turn. Yeah. Okay, so one, two, three, four, five, six, and the free one for the buckler. Okay. Yeah. So here we go. See what we get. Okay. Well, that's that's all rubbish. <laughs> all rubbish. So I'm not going to use that grenade because it's only a one and that does nothing. So I can actually put that back. I think I've still lost the grenade here, but I haven't used the skill die. I have, however, done three damage, which is nice. Um, yep, yeah, that's good. Before it gets its shields up. And then I've rolled two bones. Now I don't, I'm going to have that bones. I don't have to have this bones if I don't want to. So I'm actually going to put that back. And then I'm going to use this bone to deal an extra damage to the dragon. Done. So I think that's right. Rules wise, I think I got that right. It's now the blue one, which is stunned, so it doesn't do anything. Then it's the purple one, which is melee, so it moves two, one, two, um, <clears throat> and then it inspires one. So if there was something after it, it would then go. Okay, round two. My go, I'm going to throw another grenade, and we're going to try again with the flashbang. So that's one. Uh, two, three, four to attack the dragon delinquent. Uh, three dice for the reinforced buckler. And then one more defense die. And and that. So there's the six. There's the free one. Um, and yeah, I'm gonna I'm gonna throw another flashbang and see what happens. Come on, five. Oh, rats. Okay, so Flashbang didn't work again. I have dealt a bazillion damage to the um, thing, and I am going to uptick that to two because of my eight plus one, and I've got three shields in defense. Okay, and the dragon delinquent is dead. Before it got to do anything, it was dead. So that that's all good. That's, that's the good bit of this, is the dragon delinquent is dead. However... The Cobalt Fanatic, I forgot to move out of the way, didn't I? Yeah, I forgot to move out of the way. Okay, so it moves to hit me and it's rolling three attack dice. Now I've got lots of shields, which is good. It's four damage. So that's actually that and that come off. Okay. That's it. We are on round three. So... I'm going to use all of these dice to get two more grenades. So I've now I've got three grenades again. And then I'm going to use another grenade to do the flashbang again. <laughs> um, now the search for 325, I've never used that before. So I just need to have a look at what that could possibly do. Oh, one of them is you find a holy hand grenade. And if you roll the 325, you lock it and you apply to holy hand grenade before using. Right, okay, so we're gonna we're gonna search for 325. There is a one in six chance that I find it. The player boards are recessed, yes, they are um they are neoprene mats. So yeah, it's all neoprene. So they fit in and they're they're a nice tight snug fit. So one in, one dexterity, two dexterity, uh three, four, five, run away. Sorry. Three, four, five to run away. I've got one dexterity left, which I will use to attack. We'll use one dexterity to attack. Yeah, that'll do. Right, let's roll. See what we get. Okay, I got a one again, so that's another useless one. I did find brilliant. I found a holy hand grenade, even though I've already got a holy hand grenade. Ugh. So I'm not going to have that die either, and I've dealt one damage, which is one hit point, which is all I can do anyway, because it's hardy. Ugh. 
Right, okay. It's go, it moves two towards me. I'll put it there. Um, and then round four. Are we just gonna keep trying? Problem is I'm using up all of my grenades. I mean, there's three fives on here, so that I've been I've been really unlucky with that. But I think we might need a new plan. Yeah, we're, we're going to need a new plan. I am going to spend three dexterity to move away. In fact, two will do it. Yeah, two dexterity to move away. And then with the remaining four dexterity, uh, I'm going to do a body search, two attack, and one defense. Yeah. Yeah, move and chip away. Chip away. See what you did there. It's just going to be painfully slow. But this is this is probably what I'm going to have to do. Okay, so I've dealt four damage, which is irrelevant, because I can only do one at a time. I'm going to lock the one defense in there, and I've got three buff HP. Do I want the three buff HP? Does true damage come off buff HP? No, I'm going to put the die back, because I think I want components. Yeah. You have to take the result for the grenade. Do you? I, I thought any die that you rolled, if you don't want the result, you do not have to take it. The only time you have to take it is when it's got the red border on it. Yeah, I don't think that's right, Matthias. I think you have to spend... You have to tick this down, whether you use it or not, but you don't actually have to use the die. Um, anyway, where where are we up to? I've not rolled my buckler for the last two rounds. Thank you. But, I, yeah, <laughs> that's another reason for not taking the buckler. Um, I think we're done. It's go. It moves two. It's not going to get me. That's why I don't need to roll the buckler, although it would be bones. Uh, round five. So, yeah, I'll do body search. So one, two, three, four, five, six. Yeah. Uh, is hardy against rolled dice or all damage? It's all damage. It's in a turn. Um, <clears throat> so, yeah, it's not even per attack. It's just... Any turn, this unit takes damage. So in my turn, even if I attack it with four different things, it still only takes one damage. There you go. One damage, and I found a, a one component, which I'm not going to have. Nope, I'm just going to put it back. Uh, it's go. It moves to. End of the round. Round six. We both take a fatigue. I move one, two, no, one, two, three. <laughs> Can I get out of the way? Well, I might have messed this up. I'm just going to stay where I am. <clears throat> I'm going to re-roll two defense dice and the one for my buckler. And I'm going to roll two attack and I'm going to roll the body search. One, two, three, four, five, six. I've got one left. Uh, I'll roll another attack. Why not? Oh no, I'm rolling the search for 325. Okay. Yeah, Hardy sucks so bad. That's why I was trying to flashbang it. Okay, well I've got a bazillion bones. I've dealt it some damage. And I've got two ones that I can put in there. Uh, and yeah, I've got four bones. If, if I want the four bones, I could have the four bones... Oh, that counts as two bones, doesn't it? So actually, I've got, yeah, I've got four, which I could normally do three damage, but I can't. So, yeah, I think that's it. Odd fight. It attacks me for three, dealing me two damage, comes off my shields, and then at the start of the next round, we both take one from fatigue. Okay, there you go, battle is over. Odd fight. Very odd fight, that. 
but I'm starting to learn how flashbang works. Or not. Because <laughs> I kept missing with it. And the search, search for 325, the chance of getting it is actually quite slim, isn't it? Okay, that goes on there, that goes on there. I'm going to heal up at the end of the round. Uh, so what's the questions about... Um, so Matthias is saying it's in the special rules for Boomer. So let's have a read of the special rules for Boomer. So grenades. Grenade skills require Boomer to declare a body, gear lock or battle map position uh, that she will aim at before rolling. Boomer will do this for each grenade she rolls in addition to her declared target. Making grenades. Yeah, we know that. May create a grenade at any time during her turn. Yep. Yeah. Tailoring and using uh, all skills from the grenadier and utility bomber professions require a grenade to finish their creation. To use a grenade, decrease the boom counter by one during the determined target phase. At uh, this time, declare the position or unit you're throwing the grenade at. May use multiple grenades in a turn. All grenade costs decks to roll. Unlike boomers other skills, once any one of her grenades are rolled, she must use the rolled result. It says it there in big letters. So for, sorry, Matthias. Uh, but lots of other people have told me incorrectly, and you are right, so thank you for persisting. It actually says it right there. Must use the rolled result, must exhaust the die. That makes a lot more sense thematically. And apologies if uh, other people uh, in the chat were also saying the same thing. But yes, thank you very much. So there you go. The grenades must be... So everything I did in that last fight um, was cheating. So it didn't, yeah, I mean, it, it failed anyway. So it actually backfired. It actually didn't work. Right, there you go. Thank you very much. Thank you. I really like it when people correct me on rules mistakes. Some people are nervous about doing it because apparently I'm like the rules expert. And some people are nervous about correcting me whenever I get anything wrong. And I don't want people to be. I want people to correct me. Because um, we all make mistakes. Right. Okay, and I much prefer that rule because it makes more sense thematically. You've thrown the grenade and suddenly, yeah. Anyway, what do we get? We get two training points and loot. Okay, now, before I get the loot, I might as well use this fortunate discovery to get bag of booms. I mean, I don't have to. But then I get Spirit of Ebon. Single use on a buddy's turn. Prevent the application of one effect die to your gear lock. Okay, we like that. And two training points. What are we going to go for? We have so many skills. We have so many skills now. Now, people were saying napalm. Problem is now I've got too many grenades. Oh, napalm is a bit like poison, isn't it? That would help against um, Hardy. That would definitely help against Hardy. Take napalm ASAP. People are shouting at me napalm. Yeah. If I come across any more... Um, right, we have napalm. So that's one. Do I want to increase my attack? I think I'm all right for dex, he says. Are you ever all right for dex? Hmm. Hit points? Let's go for another health. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven. Seven health. Because what I don't want to do is I don't want to get unlucky with the initiative and then suddenly get hit like right at the start of the fight for like four or five damage. Burning eight. Yes. Burning eight. Right, we are done. Um, I, I chose to heal up at the end of the round, so no scouting. We move on to day nine. Day nine. Okay, here we go. Next card is another green one. Uh, did I get the progress point for that? No, I think I forgot to add the progress point. So is that right? One, two, three, four, five, six, seven. Seven progress points, eight days down, because we missed one. Yeah. Okay, so now we're on day nine. Unwanted affection. The day began innocently enough. I encountered a rare Gearlock family living a quiet life at the foot of a hill. Their child had been kidnapped by raiders days ago. Given our scarce population, I immediately set out on a successful rescue mission. Now I'm back, and the parents are applying pressure. Our little one will be safer with you than with us. It looks like you could use a companion anyway. 
You could use someone to help you scavenge food and water. Truth be told, the raiders paid me to take this little gearlock back. The gold coins they handed me came with a warning that this youngling was unlucky. Okay, so. Options. Option one, my skills are my companions. Okay, that's lame, but really, no thanks. The father is crushed and berates you for your decision. You feel bad. Reduce your hit point stat by by one if possible. So we lose a hit point. The other option is unlucky her. Does that mean it's unlucky to say no? You reluctantly agree and you and your new buddy prepare to head out. That is, until your new best friend trips and drops your pack down by the well. Choose three skill dice to exhaust at the start of your next battle. Keep this card in your prep area as a reminder. Now, I'm okay with that. But it's up to you in the chat. Top or bottom? Are we going to not take Baby Yoda with us? At which point we lose one hit point. But we get a progress point and we could just buy the hit point straight back. Or do we take the baby with us? And we're going to lose three skill... Or we have to exhaust three skill dice at the start of the battle. Bearing in mind... We could just exhaust ones that we don't want to use. So, it's up to you in the chat. Top or bottom, let me know. Yeah, Brad has a good point. Bottom, because I'm loaded with skills. So, I'll leave it up to you to decide. Top or bottom, and I'll have a drink while I'm doing that. Okay, so, bottom... Second, bottom, 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 bottom. Definitely the way bottom. Now you've called him Baby Yoda, we have to take him. <laughs> oh, the luggage is here. Thank you very much for joining in. Thank you for watching all of my Gloomhaven videos over the last few weeks. Um, uh, yeah, we're, go we're going with the bottom. Right, okay, that's what the chat is saying. So, choose three skill dice to exhaust at the start of your next battle. Now, that's interesting because that could be read two ways. Choose three skill dice to exhaust at the start of your next... Is it at the start of your next battle, comma, choose three skill dice to exhaust? Yeah, I think that's it. I don't think we, uh, I don't think we do it now. But we do get a progress point uh, and we get, a, uh, we get a, a progress point and a training point. So what we're going to buy for the training point? Is it going to be big boom or is it going to be yet another hit point? Hmm. I mean, we've got so many skills. We do have so many skills. I, I am going to go... Or do we go for another attack? Or do we go for another dex? Hmm. People are saying big boom. I, I thought about big boom. Let's have a look at what's going to be... No, right, no. The reason I'm not going big boom is the next battle is going to be 10 baddie points, which is going to be two fives. It's only two enemies on the board. Big Boom is great when you've got, you know, multiple enemies all over the board. So I'm, I'm going to try for another attack die. I'm going to try. I have to roll. If I get a bones, it's a failure. It's a failure, so I can't have attack. Okay, so let's go for something else. Um, I might actually go for... Do I go for another dex? I think I'm going to go for another dex. I'm going to go for another dex. Right, we are on day 10. And we're having another card, and it's another blue one. So it's another tyrant-specific encounter, which is in a fog. The fog is suffocating. With no ability to see more than a few feet away, it's easy to imagine seeing Duster's face everywhere. That scar, that dagger. The council can't be trusted, you know. The words are nothing but a whisper but they are loud and clear. Fog, suffocating, zero vision. She's right here, but she's nowhere. Maybe the fog is playing tricks with sights and sounds. They're cowards, or they'd come for me themselves like the first time. Mere seconds pass and the fog lifts. Wandering into a wolf den is usually ill-advised. Okay, anyone have some leftover bog meat? Yeah, me from the previous game that we played. Right, we are making a battle queue of 10 baddie points. So that's two fives. Create the battle queue using beast type baddies from active or defeated stacks, as many as possible, then use other types. During battle setup, place party members in gearlock melee positions only. 
then bring out baddies to gear lock range positions only. After setup, go back to normal BQ position rules. Okay, baddies have surprise. Okay, so. Create the battle queue using beast type baddies. So from the act, so I guess we look through until we find a beast type baddie, which is that one. It's the owlbear. Now, didn't people tell me about the owlbear? Like it's totally bonkers, insanely difficult. Okay, I'm looking for beasts. Beasts. Okay, and they, I'm putting those to the bottom of the stack. Okay, so we've got two, two beasts. This is going to hurt. Yes, this is going to hurt. Place party members in gear lock melee positions only. Okay. Uh, but I can go over here. Yeah. Then bring out baddies to gear lock range positions only. So number one is going to go there. Number two is going to go. Sorry, number one was that. Number two is that. Okay, so six health. Six health on the owlbear, which is number one. Uh, and then five health on the Griffin Howler, which is number two. Okay, I'm in a melee position. Um, baddies have surprise. Now, what were you saying about surprise? Is they basically go before me? Is that is that it? So there's no point me rolling initiative. I might as well just put myself at the bottom of the battle queue. Is that right? Good luck surviving the first round. Well, that's why I took the extra health. Am I, have I got one, two, three, four, five, six, seven? Okay, I've got seven. Um, so yeah, is, is that right for surprise and I don't need to do anything else? The baddies go in gear lock ranged positions. Place party members, then bring baddies to gear. Yep, yeah, yeah, you're right. Sorry. That goes there. That goes there. Oh boy. Okay, so I go to the bottom of initiative. During battle setup, place party members in gear lock melee positions only, then bring out baddies to gear lock range positions only. Yep, we're good. We are good. Well, we're not good, but we're good. So it is the Griffin Howler first. So at the start of the turn, it does signal one. That brings in a one point buddy to the bottom of the battle queue. Uh, it's got flight and dive, so it's going to have its turn. And at the end of the turn, it's then going to fly. It moves two, so I'm going to just move it to here. Oh, these are both melee. That means my grenade's not going to work, is it? Okay. Yeah, good, in quotes. Uh, and it's attacking me for three. Okay, so three dice attack. Gulp. That's not bad. Took two damage and it got a bones. So I lose two health. Right, okay. And then it dives, which means at the start of its turn, if it was flying, it dives down and deals extra damage. Right, the owlbear has got terrify and inspire one. So if it was going before that one, there'd be a problem. But it isn't. And terrify means if it attacks me, I'm scared and then I can't attack it. Oh no, if I attack it, I'm scared, and then I can't attack it again. Right. So it moves two, and it's going to hit me for four. Oh dear. Oh dear, 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 dear. Right, I now see what you're saying about surviving round one. I'm down to one health. I survived. Wow. Right, okay, so my go. <clears throat> Here we go. Um, yeah. Is it going to be grenade time? Or is it going to be, is it going to be running away time? <laughs> is it going to be holy hand grenade time? Uh, well, I'll tell you what, I, I, I've got to roll, I mean, I could just run away. I've got six, I've got seven decks. I could get over here. I could go one, two, three, four, five, and I'm, and I'm away. I could absolutely go five. 
and then with two defense dice, and then with um, a what's it thingy, a free a freed one from the buckler. Oh, I forgot to exhaust some skill dice. Yes, you're right. Thank you. So which skill dice do I not want to use? Um, I kind of want to keep that. I kind of want to keep that. I think I'm going to exhaust that one, that one, and that one. Okay, so they're the three that I've exhausted. Read the dive skill. Yeah, I thought dive meant if the flight effect die is active at the start of the turn, oh, immediately place this unit adjacent to weakest available opposing unit and target it. Oh, right. Oh, okay, so that just means the owlbear is not going to attack me. Okay, so it's flying above and then it dives down. Right, that's fine. So I'm going to roll three defense dice, two for me, one for the buckler. So that's... Uh, so how many did I move? I moved one, two, three, four, five. Oh, yeah, that's it. Am I, just, am I just rolling this and trying to survive? Exhaust your parts dice. Yeah, I thought about that. But I kind of want those grenades. Now I could actually... I could actually try and kill the Griffin Howler. It's got one, two, three, four, five health. If I was to... No, I've got to, I've got to run away from the owlbear. But if I do run away from the owlbear... Why did I put the owlbear there? Why didn't I put it there? Oh, bad play, Paul. Bad, bad play. Oh, if I hadn't taken so much damage on the first round. I, I need to be over here, otherwise I'm going to get hit by the owlbear, which only gives me one... Uh, it gives me two decks to use. So with those two decks, I could do a frag grenade with a bigger boom. I could. And if I'm lucky, I will get five damage, but only if I'm lucky. No, I think I need to do this. It, it's going to be three defense dice, and I just need to pray. Yeah, I think I've probably lost this fight. <laughs> hmm. Yeah, grenades can hit flying targets. Yes. That that's what I'm thinking about. <clears throat> I could just use my two decks to do that, but then if I don't kill it, I'm dead. Whereas three defense die might might give me a fighting chance. I should have kept my stun grenade. Ah. I could have just used it and stunned it, and then it would have lost a turn. Hmm. <clears throat> yeah. That would have been good. Right, what about the Holy Hand Grenade? Uh, no, that's that's not actually that much damage. Is that as good as a Frag Grenade? Yes. yes. I don't know. I mean, the playing it safe is rolling the defense dice, but then I'm not actually doing anything, and I'm in exactly the same position next turn. I've got to get rid of this Griffin Howler at some point. Okay, I'm going to do this. <clears throat> we're going we're, we're to run into the corner, and I'm going to roll the defense dice. That's all I'm doing this turn. Well, I've got one point of defense, two bones, and then at the end of the round, <clears throat> a dire wolf pup appears. Oh, hello. Uh, so this goes on lane three, melee. Okay, and then the dive ability kicks in. So this arrives here. It attacks me for three. Any more than one damage and I'm dead. Dead. Right, okay, so there you go. <laughs> that didn't work. I'm knocked out. The day is over. I didn't get any of those rewards. This has been an absolute roller coaster of a day today, hasn't it? This session.
it went bad at the start, then it started looking good, then all of a sudden it's gone bad again. I'm not giving up hope. But that is another day, another day done. Those go to the bottom of the stack. That goes on there. Those go over there. Those go over there. That goes over there. We didn't get any progress. How many progress are we on? One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. We need 10. We need 10 progress. We got eight. Okay, so that's the end of the day. I healed up. Day 11. We've only got 13 days maximum. And the next card is... We might not even get to the last fight. <laughs> it's the final of the blue card, so Shadow Pack. Go back to Obandar and burn it down. You have no idea what you're trifling with. Duster materializes out of the shadows and casually leans against a, a Zelfry tree that has clearly seen better days. The scar on her face glistens in the moonlight. How can a scar look fresh and decades old at the same time? The yellow beady eyes of, of direwolves are visible between the tree trunks. I don't want to kill you, but I will stop you at any cost. Without another word, she waltzes back into the shadows. She's gone. The wolves are not. Okay, so we have a choice. Top option. There's no running away. We have a fight. Uh, we have a fight with 11 baddie points plus a five point beast baddie at the top. So that'll be five plus five plus five plus one. So we have a 16 point battle. And we get loot. Or, our chance they're friendly, any chance they're friendly, you offer your hand to the largest wolf in order to let it sniff you. Choose a gear lock and roll a d6. On a one to two, the wolf takes your hand and leaves with it. Permanently reduce one gear lock's health stat die by three. Or three to six, the wolf is caught off guard by your boldness and leads the pack away. Encounter success is achieved no matter the outcome. I'm going to go with the bottom one because A, I don't want another fight because it's getting late. And B, I've been unlucky. And hopefully, yeah, this is, this is crazy luck based, but... We're going to do it. Either way, we're going to get two training points out of it. So here we go. It's all down to this dice. We need a three to six. Come on, lucky gaming rules dice. No. <laughs> okay, so the health stat is reduced by three. Well, and then I get two training points. I'm going to buy two health. Okay, so them's the breaks. Yep, yeah. okay. So we did that. We gained a progress. That's the end of another day. How many progress have we got? One, two, three, four. I'll put them in fives, that'll be easier. One, two, three, four, five. One, two, three, four, five. We got nine. We got nine progress, which is not enough. We need ten. So we're going to go forward to another day. Um, I can scout. I'll scout at the end of the day. I'm scouting a five point buddy. Uh, it is a manticore. We don't like manticores. We're going to put it to the bottom of the deck, bottom of the stack. And then we're going to move on to day 12. We are running out of time. We need a progress from this. If we don't do this encounter, we can't win. I can grow my hand back. Yes, just a flesh wound. So, risky payoff. The Ebon, evil as they are, still show a strange cross-species loyalty. Trolls won't hesitate to call for help from an orc, a kobold, or even a bog scum. A fight may look winnable, but it's often not worth the risk. Lucky for me, creatures of the Ebon almost always have a price. I wonder if the menacing figure ambling toward me can simply be bribed with something shiny in exchange for safe passage. Unfortunately, if he has friends hiding in those bushes, they might be waiting to take a, uh, to take a whole lot more than a shiny object. Okay, so choices are combat or no combat. If we have a combat, we have a 12 point battle. At the end of rounds three to five, roll a d6 and there might be more stuff. Or maybe a peace offering is worth a shot. If you have loot to offer, choose one and place it on the battle mat, roll a d6. Loot is taken, but Buddy's not satisfied. Make encounter choice again. Or loot is taken and Buddy leaves. No battle today. I'm going to choose this one. Uh, yeah, I'm going to I'm going to choose the bottom option. And 
Surely I can't be unlucky again. I might be. I might be unlucky again and lose the buckler. Oh no. <laughs> uh. So they take the spirits of Eben. I mean, I love the way that this is thematic. And then they say, no, I'm sorry, that, that, that's not enough. Baddy is not satisfied, make encounter choice again. If I choose the bottom one again, I lose the reinforced buckler. Don't lose the buckler. Yeah, we're going we're to have to choose the top one. <sighs> so we're having a 12-point baddie fight. And at the end of rounds three to five, we roll a d6 and there might be more things joining. Okay, so lane one, lane two, lane three and lane four. Okay, so here we go. Lane one is a bog lurk with six health, which has got poison two and is a ranged creature. Don't like that. Lane two is a griffin howler with five health, melee. Lane three is a troll romper with thick skin and careless. And lane four is another troll romper with the same stats as the other troll romper. Okay, initiatives. Uh, that's on two. That's on two. Uh, number two is on five. And number one is on four. Right, my initiative. Six. Awesome. Right, okay, here we go. Don't make it to rounds three or five. Yeah, if I can get rid of everything before then, brilliant. I don't think I can. Okay, so where are we going to start? Let's start... I want to get rid of the poison thing, because that, that poison thing is the biggest issue. Now, unfortunately... Oh, they shouldn't be there. Unfortunately... Um, why didn't I take the big boom? I mean, why did nobody tell me in the chat to take the big boom? I, I blame you. I, I blame all of you for not telling me to take the big boom. <laughs> Even though you all told me to take the big boom. I know that. Now, is that a five-point buddy? It is. Where am I going to start? I think I'm going to start here. But I want to group these together as much as possible. Hmm. Okay, well I'm going first. The good thing is I'm going first. The bad news is I'm not really in the right position for the frag grenade. Good news is, I can stun one of them. So I've got seven decks, and I've got a free dice from the buckler. So there's the free dice from the buckler. How am I going to spend this seven decks? Well, it's going to be, I think, three attack dice on the bog lurk. Although, if I manage to flashbang the bog lurk, then, and get rid of its poison too, it does nothing. For the entire battle, it does nothing. And yeah, uh, yeah, I can roll multiple bombs. So I'm thinking maybe the napalm. Put the napalm on something. I might go for the frag on the griffin howler. Yeah, let's take all right. Frag with bigger boom on the Griffin Howler. Okay, that's going to cost me one grenade. So that's two decks used. Three attack dice on the bog lurk. 
That's five decks used and two defense. Okay, this is what I'm thinking. Let's just run it through my head again. I'm going to take a bit of damage from this. The downside is if this doesn't kill the Griffin Howler, it's not going to attack me this turn, but then it's going to fly and then it's going to attack me next turn and I can't hit it. I could hit it, but it's a waste. Hmm. Yeah. I think this is what I'm going to do. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, plus the three dice. Three attack, two defense, frag grenade. So I'm attacking the Boglurk with my targeted attack, and I'm using the grenade on the Griffin Howler. Right, now that I've made a decision, now you can let me know in the chat whether that's what you would have done or what you would have done or whatever, but that's what I'm going to do. Gulp. Oh look, millions of bones. <laughs> okay. So the bigger so so the frag grenade I, I have to use, right? That that's four damage, that that is done. So that's four damage on the Griffin Howler and two damage on the Troll Romper, but it's got thick skin, so it only takes one. Is that right? Thick skin. Ignore the first damage, this unit would take this turn. Yes, so it takes one. Okay, so that's the frag grenade done. I had no choice about that. I could choose to keep the um, uh, the bigger boom, but now that my frag grenade is gone, I might put this as a bones. Well, let's have a look what other bones we've got, because we've got three more bones here, so I'm, I am going to keep it as bones. Because what I've done is I've got one shield there. Oh, oh no, I'm one short. Oh, I'm one short. Dang it. Just needed one more attack. Ah, oh, right, anyway, it's two damage. It's two damage on the bog lurk. Do I use my throw ends to do three more damage? Or do I just use the throw odds to do one more damage? Or, aha, tell you what I could do. I could use a bluff bomb to move something away. But there's no point because it's not going to attack me. No. I don't think it's going to attack me. Okay, so Brian said he would have done the same but rolled better. Thank you very much, Brian. Yes. <laughs> Oh, if I'd have only just rolled a little bit more damage on the frag grenade or the bigger bomb. Oh, that was unlucky. Hmm. I mean, I could keep these, these bones. Okay, I'm just going to use one of them to do one more damage to the bog look. Okay, there you go. We are done. It is now purple one. It moved two. One, two. And it now flies. Flap, 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 flap. Where's the flappy thing? Flappy thing. Uh, and then it signals one. Okay. Next. The blue one puts a poison two effect on me. Next one is the yellow one which moves to here and attacks me for one dice. It's got careless, it's got careless. No, two damage, what? So that's one shield plus one health. Ouch. Right, and then this one goes one, two. Why didn't I use the gradient aid now? Oh, I should have waited. I should have waited and worked out where they were gonna to move to because now the grenade would have been better. Oh, I could use the holy hand grenade. I might have to use the holy hand grenade. Yeah, I'm gonna have to, aren't I? Yeah, okay, right, end of the round. Round two. 
the battle queue, there's one more to come in, but things are still there. So it's me first. Yeah, I'm going to have to do it. So the, hand, the holy hand grenade for one dex, uh, targeting that. Okay. And then my attack attack is three dice on that. So that's one, two, three, four. That's free. I've still got three more dice to use. Uh, that'll be two defense. And right, let's start searching for things. So let's use, let's search for some of this. Yeah. Can't grenade flight directly. I think you can. Yeah, you can. It's a little weird that you can attack something that's flying around with a grenade, but you, you can. Um, unless again, we've been getting that wrong, but no, I think you can. <clears throat> so one, two, three, four, five, six, seven. I mean, we've got all of this stuff as well. What's that? Oh, actually, I'm going to roll that instead. We're going to, oh no, that's consumable. Ah, we don't want to roll that just now. No, no, no. We'll, we'll save that. Do we want to use the search for three, two, five? <clears throat> It's got double bones all over it. No, I think we're good for now. Uh, no, I will use the search for 325 instead of... No, 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 no. No, right, done. Final decision. Those dice. Right, here we go. So we've drew... We've rolled... Um, Right, well, let, let, let's lock these in first. We've rolled some defense, which is good. Oh, no, I can't. Yeah, I can. Well, yeah. Uh, have we rolled any bones? Yes, I've rolled the bones. Have I rolled any damage? I have. I've rolled two damage. Two damage plus a bones is three damage. The bog lurk has gone. Right, that's good. Now we've got this. Now that is an icon we've not seen tonight, which is... Controlled blast deal. Uh, oh no, this is the holy hand grenade. So this is one damage uh, to all targets uh, with no party backlash. Two, if it was boosted with element three two five. So it's not it's not great, but it is the one damage I need to get rid of the Griffin Howler. So I think we're going to do it. That is the worst holy hand grenade. I have ever seen in my life. Yeah. I don't need to throw odds. Did I take the two poison damage? I didn't. Thank you very much. Poison goes down to one. Do I need to use the throw odds? I think I did. Because it had three health. And I dealt two damage. So I had to use the throw odds to deal it the extra damage. Oh, but I see what you mean. I don't need to use the throw odds. Because, let's do the holy hand grenade first. The holy hand grenade is one damage to everything. Thank you. Yes. So that deals one damage to everything. The thick skin absorbs it on the trolls. But that goes, and then it deals one damage to that. Thank you. If that's what you mean. Yes. So that's the holy hand grenade gone, and that was a consumable. So that is back in my mat. This is a one. I'm just going to put it back. Because one's rubbish. Oh, no, in fact, one is fine, <laughs> because I only need two. Unless I do another... No, we've got rid of the two five-point baddies. Yeah, it's only little ones next, so I'm okay with that. That's going there. Whew. Wow, right. Purple one has gone. Blue one has gone. Yellow one hits me for one. Bones. Careless. Takes the damage. Uh, green one. Move two. Hits me for one. One damage. Comes off my shield. End of the round. Uh, Baddy appears. It's a dragon whelp. On lane one. Ranged. With weaken one. Okay, so we want to get rid of that. Comes in at the bottom. Round three. Now, doesn't something happen at the end of round three? Unless I can kill all of these. I don't think I can kill all of these. Rick says three bones, three damage. Uh, yep, 
Yeah, I don't know what that was on. But yes, I can. Uh, when you had worried about those trolls back in the early days, I did worry about those trolls. I, I always worry about those trolls. Right, start of round three. I take a damage. I'm down to two health. This is not... This is not over. Two health. One grenade left. I'm not going to use that grenade. And I need to find more parts to get more grenades for the final battle, which is going to have to be tomorrow. When I say tomorrow, I mean game time, not real time. Uh, I'm going to roll... Right, so seven decks. Seven decks. I can't move. Um, I could just roll defense dice. There's the free one from the buckler. I could just roll defense dice and... And just loads of these things. I don't want to use another grenade. So I'm rolling these two. And I'm rolling that. So there's, there's three decks. I can't roll any defense dice because they're locked in. I could unlock that one, but I'm going to keep it. So three. I've got four, four dice left. I can do three attack. I've still got one dice left. I'll, I'll search for three, two, five. Yeah, there you go. That's what I'm doing. Um, what battle round are we on? We're on the start of battle round three. Yes. So what are we targeting? I think we target the dragon whelp because it can attack me from range, and it's got a, it's got more attack than these two. Yeah, for a one point buddy, that's really tough. So yeah, we're just going to try and get rid of it before it um, before it does anything. Right, here we go. We're targeting that. And we're searching for stuff on the ground as well. Right, here we go. Let's see what we get. In fact, what I'm going to do... I know it's a bit late in the day to move things around. But I'm actually going to move that up there. Like that. And then we can have the dice a bit more, a bit more on. That will work. Okay, so what have we got? We have found a holy hand grenade. Awesome. Now, so I use that die to find one of those. Okay, I've then found three of those, which is good. I found two generic parts, which is good, because I can use two of those, two of those, two of those. I'm at three grenades again. Uh, I've rolled the bones, which can go there. I've rolled four damage, which is enough to kill the dragon whelp, so that's gone. And I've rolled another bones here, but I'm going to put that back there. Yeah, that was all right. I'm happy with that. That's the blue one gone. So the two trolls attack me. First one, two damage to me. Second one, one damage to me. That's all of my defense gone. Um, and then that's the end of the round. So now we need to roll a gaming rules dice. Five, uh, a one, no, no baddies join. Right, okay. Round four, uh, my go. So we were happy stalling. No, we've got, we're, we're all right now, aren't we? We, we? we want this to be over now, I think. Yeah, I don't want to spend any more grenades. I've rolled all of my stuff. I've got three grenades going, get ready for going into the next battle. So I think we, I'm probably going to roll that. I'll roll that and the buckler and two defense dice and then three attack. And I'm going for troll romper number four because I don't like him. Yeah, so <laughs> a bazillion bones. I mean, that's just insane. And three damage. Three damage minus the thick skin of one. Gone. Okay, and I've got so many bones. I, I, I might as well use five of them. All right, I've never done this before. But I'm going to use five of them to hide. Now, what does that do? Place untargetable effect on Boomer. Untargetable until the start of this unit's next turn. It cannot be targeted. There you go, I'm hidden. 
I love the way that I'm still discovering stuff about this character. Uh, so on the Trolls go, it can't attack me. At the end of the go, we roll for reinforcements. I've rolled a two. So we get a one point buddy to the bottom of the queue, which then appears. It goes in lane one, and it is a Kobold Tracker uh, with two health, and it is a ranged creature on lane one. Comes in at the bottom. Right. That was round four. We're now into round five. I'd love to be able to get rid of both of these this round. Yeah, you could say I have too many bones. Yes. Uh, uh, yeah, if it says thwack a target, it is your target that you've already chosen. It can't be a different target. Um, yeah, I think we're just going to hit... Now, it's got hardy. Oh, it's got compound. Compound means it's going to attack me with five dice. Oh, but it's hardy. Oh, that for a one-point buddy? That's insane. Maybe I shouldn't have hidden. That might kill me. I'm going to have to use a grenade. I'm going to have to use a grenade and get rid of the hardy and then attack it. Or I could stun it. The stun has a bones on it. The flashbang doesn't. It's going to have to be a grenade. Don't want to do it. But I'm going to have to use a flashbang grenade as one, two, three, four. My free one, five, six. I mean, I could just run away from this, but I, I think this will be okay. We're going to, um, yeah, we're going to flashbang that and we're going to target that. I mean, if I'm running away, I don't need the defense dice. But if I get the defense dice, I can do more stuff. So yeah, so free, one, two, three, four, five, six, and I'll move one just for a laugh. Okay. Yeah, compound coming in in a late round is tough, but I think my flashbang grenade is going to help here. So, I oh, now I rolled a five. So I put, I put the disable effect on that, which means its skills have gone, which means it no longer has hardy and compound, which means then I attack it for three damage, and it's dead. And then I put two more shields on, and then I get another bone, which goes there. Right, done. Uh, then the troll moves to here, attacks me for one, two damage, which comes off the shield. That's the end of the round. That was the end of round five. We roll for reinforcements. There are a one point buddy, oh, which arrives in lane one. It is a kobold green thumb with, guess what, hardy, melee, lane one. Ah. Right, so now we're in round six, which is a fatigue round. So, oh dear. Oh dear, 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 dear. I die at the start of next round. Oh dear, 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 dear. Can I cry? Oh, I thought I'd work that out then. I have no healing. This is so painful. I don't, I, I have to win this round. That was so unlucky to draw, um, to get another buddy that arrived. And it had Hardy. If it didn't have Hardy, I, I could have done this. Now, I need to read how Napalm works. I am clutching at straws now. Napalm. At the start of this buddy's turn, it takes hash damage. I can, I can do this. I can still do it. This is the only chance I've got to do it. and I, Because I die at the start of next round because of the fatigue. So, let's have a look at what's on the napalm. Yeah. 
napalm grenade on the cobalt green thumb. No, 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 it still doesn't work. Because I, I need to also attack the cobalt green thumb. I need to attack both of them. Yeah, I can't do this. Is there an any die missing? Yes, there is, but it's not going to help me. I can't do this. This is... Oh. Okay, so now I'm going to ask the chat for tactical advice. Is there anything I can do to survive this? Kitchen sink grenade time. It's not going to help me. Stunning them is not going to help me. Um, oh, holy hand grenade. I can do it. Right. So I use both grenades. <clears throat> I use napalm. I use holy hand grenade. So the holy hand grenade is going against that one. The napalm is going against that one. And I'm also attacking that one. Okay. With, with three attack. And then I'm rolling some defense. Okay. This is total overkill. And I'm going to go into the final fight completely unprepared. Couldn't you have used backup plan to kill the troll before you drew the last body? Uh, I don't the backup plan you can only uh, use it on your target, and that wasn't my target. My target was was the other one. I can't target two different things. Uh, moving away, I don't think he's going to help me. Yeah, the healths are as follows: one. One and two, but I si I simply need to kill both of these this turn. Otherwise, I I die, I die from fatigue at the start of next round. So I think this is it. I think it is. Use one grenade. Use the napalm grenade there. Use the holy hand grenade there, and also attack that because I need to deal it one damage now, and then it takes one damage at the start of its turn. Holy Hand Grenade doesn't use a bomb counter. Thank you. That's good to know. It does, however, use the Holy Hand Grenade. So I think that's it. And yes, I can move. I can move. For, I can move miles away if I wanted to. Okay. I think this is it. I think this is my only. My only choice. Uh, Boomer, can you use three or four bones on different targets? Can you? I don't think you can. Okay, so the throw ends can. Okay, thank you. So just reading this a bit more carefully, there is a difference between throw odds and throw ends. And I hadn't realized this. This is very important. Throw odds is you thump your target for one damage. So your target takes an extra one damage. Throw ends is thwack a target. Okay, so I think throw ends... The, the wording there is different. And again, this isn't explained anywhere until until that Paul Grogan guy has written the four-page guide on how this actually is it works. That's where it will be made absolutely clear. But at the moment, this is a good question, ruling-wise, that specifically says thump target for one damage, whereas that says thwack a target for three damage. Okay, so I think if we go back in time and do what Rick said, is at the end of the previous round, we use four bones to thwack a target for three damage. Yes, if they don't mean different things, they shouldn't. Use, they should use different language. I, I, yeah, I'm exactly the same with you, Brad. If they both meant the same thing, then this is either a misprint or a rata, or they actually deal different things. Uh, now, George is the rules expert. So I don't know if that has been officially ruled. Yeah, the keyword is target. But yeah, the point is different wording. If they meant the same thing, it should be the same wording. It's consistency. So David says that your version both says target, not a target. So this is the later version of the, of the thing. The version of, um, the version of too many bones that I have is version 2.1, which is the later version. So I think... This is a newer version than what you've got, um, David. And the fact that your version says target and that says a target 
why, why would they change the wording on this? And I know it's getting late and I know we're getting near the end, but this is, this is quite important. If they have released a new version of this and they've added a word, why have they done that? Why have they done that? I know what you're saying, George, but why would they release a new version of this card and add a word in there that tells every that tells us that it now means something different? Target, targeting, baddie. I mean, I'm not going to find the answers in the rule book because the rule book is, yeah. Not the easiest. It's all about baddie skills and baddie turn sequence. Okay, so when you look up the word target in the rule book, oh no, 11, 19, 28. 28, getting technical. Targeting, can I choose to target to roll my attack dice and a different target for my skill and a different target for my backup plan? So this is in the rule book, page 28. No, if a skill, backup plan or attack has the word target in the description, then it must be used on the same target. So George is correct. You only get one target per turn, which is declared before you choose which skill which dice are rolled. That being said, if a skill does not use the term target, such as Boomer's Frag skill, then it can be used. Okay, so that, that is clear. George is correct. But why, why did they add a word there? That is wrong. Okay, that, that needs to go. I need a permanent marker to cross out that word there because that is wrong and causes confusion. There you go. They've been answering this question all the time. So, yes, that, that, that's the problem, George. Uh, it's like everybody's saying, why have they released a new version of this sheet where they added a word which therefore added confusion? Um, there you go. Right, anyway, sorry for that 10 minutes uh, distraction. Meanwhile, back to the final round of this battle, I think I'm just rolling this dice and this and this and we're seeing what happens. Okay, so I'm attacking the Cobalt Green Thumb. Um, so I think, I think we've done it. Uh, we have done one damage to everything with the Holy Hand Grenade. Okay, so that's that gone. Yep, and then we've put a napalm effect on that. And basically, <laughs> this is total overkill. Uh, but what this means is, at the start of this baddie's turn, it's going to take two damage for three rounds. Okay, so at the start of the baddie's turn, it dies and I win the encounter. Whew. Right, there you go. One, two, three, four, five, six. We're done. Thank you for bearing with us. Uh, we gain a progress point, which is 10. We gain a training point, oh, no, two training points and a loot, which is a fortunate discovery, which is going to be the holy hand grenade. That was lucky. Right. We get our grenades back. The problem now is that we're going into the final fight and we do not have three grenades. In fact, we only have one. And one is not three. There we go. So what am I going to spend my two training points on? Where's the napalm gone? Let's have the napalm back. Let's have the bigger boom back. I'm going to spend my two training points on more health. Because I need more health. So one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. We have eight health going into the final fight. We have all of our skills that we want. Uh, that was day 12. Yeah, that was day 12, and we just about have 10 progress points because we failed two days. So, <clears throat> we go to the final day, day 13. I don't have a 13-sided dice. We choose to fight Duster because if we don't do it today, we lose the game, uh, and we do have 10 progress. So here we go. We're fighting Duster. At this point, I'm going to read the card for the first time. The final conflict. Battle queue is number of baddies equal to party size. One. Okay. In a party of one or two, we use one point baddies, which is one. So we have one one point baddie. 
OK? Interesting. Um, add duster to top of BQ. Duster will take top spot on any meter. Right, so this is duster. Duster has nine health. Is it going to focus? Is it going to focus? It is nine health, six push initiative, got shrouded, limit, hide, two bones, can move diagonal, melee, got three attack dice, two defense dice, and a special one. So shrouded, duster can only be targeted by adjacent units. Right, limit, duster's targets immediately remove a stat die from their gear lock mat for the remainder of this battle. What? What? Is that every time she attacks, she removes a stat die from their gear lock mat for the remainder of the battle? Yeah. Limit will destroy you because you didn't raise your defense. Okay, so I tell you what, knowing, knowing this going in, let's drop the health down by one and let's have one defense. Okay, let's do that. I didn't realize that's what she was going to do. So that, that is insanely... Right, okay, so we've got uh, Duster at the top. Where's, where's the Duster initiative dice? Duster will be one, goes at the top. Uh, then the Orc Peon is next. So Duster is one with nine health. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine health. Duster, melee, Range one. Orc Peon, three health, lane two, uh, goes on initiative three. Okay, uh, melee, lane two. And then me, oh, I've got a roll for defense. Yep, you're right, thank you. I've got a roll for defense, I have two. Didn't get a bone, so I'm okay. Yeah, for those people watching who don't know, Whenever you train in attack or defense, you have to actually roll dice to see whether you were successful or not. And if you weren't successful, you can spend the point elsewhere. It's, I don't know, I don't know about that rule. It just seems a bit odd. Oops, I guess it's supposed to limit it. I'm on initiative four. Okay. So, this'll be fun. This is where the napalm comes in. I've only got one grenade. And it's going to have to be... Oh, and I've got the Holy Hand Grenade. Is this right? that I've, There's only one one-point buddy? Oh, because I'm a party of one. If there was if there's four of us, it would be four five-point buddies. So with us, with us, in the solo game, this is one one-point buddy. That seems a bit weird. Um, anyway, where am I going to start? Duster is going first, okay, and Duster can move diagonal and is melee and has got loads of stuff. So let's do Duster first. Duster moves to here, okay, that's, that's what we're going to do. We're going to move Duster to here uh, and then she's going to attack me. So she uses limit, so I lose the defense die, and then she's attacking me with three attack, her special fancy purple die, which I got and lost. Where have I put it? There. Uh, and two defense. Okay, and let's just read hide. Duster cannot be targeted until her next turn, if she rolls two bones. Okay. Yes, George, I'm going to do everything. When it's my turn, the whole lot's going to go. Here we go. This is Duster attacking me she got me by surprise, so I've got no defense. Okay, right. Oh, she's rolled loads of defense <clears throat> and dealt me four damage. Okay, and cloak and dagger. Nope, Duster's dagger. Place a bleed effect die on any target Duster does damage to this round. Okay, so I'm bleeding. Now that's, that's bad, isn't it? I take one damage at the start of my turn forever. Okay, I'm so dead. I'm so dead. Right, okay, that is Duster done. It is my go. So I've got seven decks. 
Now, she got the four defense on her. That's, that's really harsh. Oh, so I take a damage at the start of the turn. Right, I'm down to two health. <clears throat> um, I've only got one grenade. If I if I use the frag grenade with the bigger boom, it's it's not even going to get through her shields. Yeah. I know the battle's over. <laughs> Oh, the permanent thing. Yeah, thank you. The thing that we got at the start. Once during the tyrant battle, before the tyrant rolls its dice, prevent it from rolling its tyrant dice. Discard after use. Yeah, okay, thank you. Let's use that. So I'm not bleeding. So I get one health back. I had completely forgotten about that. Thank you. It's not going to help us, but at least it's uh, at least it's something. Yeah, the fact that she's rolled double defense on here. Um, It's going to have to be the napalm, and then it's going to have to hunt around to find more parts to make another grenade. Now, can I run away and get away from her? Because she can move diagonally. So if I go to here, I'm safe. What's that? One, two, three, four, five, six. Yeah, if I, if I spend six decks to move to here, I'm safe. Which is just crazy. But then she can't hit me and she can't limit me. But then all I'm doing is spending six decks each time to run away. Which seems... Yeah. Okay, so one dice for the buckler. Am I going to rather, rather run away? Napalm is not better than frag. Well, na yeah, the, the reason I'm thinking <clears throat> is the napalm is true damage. No, it's not true damage. I thought napalm was true damage. No, it's not. Okay. Now that I know that, it's going to be frag grenade with the bigger boom. So that's one, two. Uh, the buckler's free. Three for the holy hand grenade, which is also going on duster. So that's three. Four, five, six. Seven. And the free one. Okay. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven. And the free one. I think that's right. I think that's what I'm going to do. Um, so Orc will go to lane two, ranged and block duster if he runs to top lane. Yeah. Yeah, I'd, I'd move to there. The Orc would then go to there and Duster can't get me. But I'm not going to do that. I'm not going to spend six decks to run away. Um, here we go. So we're targeting Duster with all of these things. Right. We needed a miracle. We missed with the grenade. So yeah, it's a bit of an anticlimax compared to what an evening it's been, this battle couldn't be going more wrong. But, you know, them's the breaks. I just, yeah. So that goes in there and doesn't do anything. This is one damage to everything, <laughs> which is that and that, which means the peon is, is angry. Uh, oh, that bigger boom. Could I use that on? Increases the damage of your frag and big boom grenades. Nope, so that's useless. Put that back. Uh, three damage, which takes off that, oops, uh, and two points of defense. Yeah. Yes, I did want three grenades coming into the fight. That was, that was the plan. However, as you saw from the previous day, that was just not possible. If I hadn't have done what I did on the previous day, we wouldn't have even been able to have a fight. But if I'd have rolled a bit luckier there, that could have been... Four damage on Duster. Could have been. Wasn't. Right, so now the Orc Peon moves to here and can't attack me. And that is the end of the first round. Round two, I get attacked by Duster. Uh, so she limits me. 
Let's take the dexterity down. Why not? Don't want to take the attack down. <laughs> That's all I've got. Uh, so all of a sudden my dexterity is gone. Uh, she's got three attack dice, two defense dice, and her special dice. Duster is tough. Duster is tough. Uh, I'd like to replay this final battle again with two grenades and see see what would have happened. I've lost her special die. That means she can't roll it. Is that right? That's how the rules work. I keep missing it. Um, yeah, three attack, two defense, special die. Uh, so that's four damage, so I'm dead. Nope. No, I've got one health left. One health left. Uh, she's got one defense. Oh, I funny she had that last time. Uh, one bones, which is not enough. And cloak and dagger. If two or more gear locks are on the battle map, nope. Temporar temporarily remove the next gear lock on the inny meter from battle map and place duster on their battle map position. When gear lock is KO'd, the next gear lock will assume a starting position on the battle map. Okay, so it does nothing. So cloak and dagger does nothing in a single game. If I'd have taken the health down, I would have died. So it's my go. I get another go. I've got three attack, a free defense. Uh, I will re-roll my defense dice just for a laugh. Uh, I haven't got any grenades, so I can't do anything here. I could search for 325 and get a grenade, but uh, I can't even body search. Yeah, we're going to die. So that'll do. We'll go down fighting. Everything on Duster. Uh, oh, I found a grenade. <laughs> Brilliant. Found a grenade. Can't do anything with it now. Got two bones. Needed a third one. I've done three damage and I've got one defense. So that's one plus two. Yeah, this, this would have been possible. This would have been possible if it had been a bit luckier with the dice. Um, and then I've got... I can throw something at her. For another one damage. Yeah, I think this 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 might have been possible. Oh, I only have three decks. Oh well, I've cheated, but it doesn't matter because because I die anyway. Uh, whether I die this round from the orc. Oh, it's rolling two dice, isn't it? Yeah, the orc kills me. There we go. So yeah, a little bit of an anticlimax. Bad start to the game. Then an awesome middle. Then I had a really tough fight on day twelve, and then at the end. Yeah, got quite unlucky with that uh, with that frag grenade. I, I don't think I would have done it if I'd have got luckier with that frag grenade. Uh, oh, I don't know, I might have done. I, I might have got Duster down to maybe... No, it, it, it would have been possible if I'd have been luckier at the end. Um, yeah, great game. Love it. My opinion of the game is still the same as it was a couple of weeks ago. It's fantastic. It's well designed. It's very clever. It's very replayable. It's extremely tactical. It's very thinky. There's there's a lot of rules. Uh, there's some rules that, in my opinion, don't make any sense whatsoever. Um, but a lot of the other rules do. Uh, and thank you for everybody in the chat to help me with some of the things. I'm comfortable with Boomer now. I I'm I, I'm not completely comfortable with it. But the reason I chose Boomer today is because I wasn't comfortable with it before and then what I mean by comfortable is played it enough to understand how it works now I feel I've played boomer enough to understand how it works I still think it needs a, a guide written up uh, to basically help new players get to where I was the only reason I'm comfortable with this character is not only have I played it three or four times I've had people like Scott George Mark and Matthias and everybody else helping me with how it's supposed to you guys have put in the work for the last couple of years uh, to ask all of the questions and answer all of the questions about how these characters work and I don't feel that new players to the game should have to put in all of that effort to learn how to play a character which is why I think there needs to be a four page PDF for each character that goes along with this that actually tells you step by step how these things work that what I think it needs I don't have the time to put that together, unfortunately, otherwise I would have done it in January. Um, but I think I'm at the stage now with Boomer where I could probably write that guide. Guaranteed, I haven't used Smokescreen. I haven't used Sonic Cleanse. Uh, I haven't really seen Search for 325, but I think I know how that works. Um, Duster was a tough opponent. Would I have been able to do it if I'd have been 
if I'd have gone into this battle with three grenades? Interesting. I, I, I might have done. If I wasn't too tired, I would set this final battle up again, have three grenades, and see what happens. Would I have been able to kill Duster with my three grenades? I would have done the frag, the big boom, the holy hand grenade, and I would have done, the stunner wouldn't have done anything, and the napalm. I would have put those three on. And, let's remember, I didn't take smokescreen. If I'd have taken smokescreen, and I'd have rolled a one, the next one time a baddie targets this unit, it will miss. So if I'd have taken the smokescreen, I could have put the smokescreen on, and then Duster would not have been able to attack me. She would have gone first in the round, but... Um, Round two, she wouldn't have been able to attack me if I used the smoke grenade. So, yeah, fan fascinating game. So, like I mentioned at the start, uh, this video is only made possible through the support of the Patreon campaign. So, I, you know, I'm, I, whilst I enjoy playing this game, obviously the time it takes to set up the stream, plan everything, and obviously go ahead with it, uh, is only made possible through the support of the Patreon campaign. So, thank you very much to all of my Patreon supporters for making not only this visit video possible, but pretty much all of the content that I'm making at the moment. Uh, if you are interested in supporting the channel, uh, patreon.com forward slash gaming rules. That's there. Um, I will be back tomorrow afternoon with Maracaibo. Uh, and then Friday night, so tomorrow afternoon GMT, 2 p.m. GMT. Um, I'll show you the image on screen. There you go. That's the plan for this week. The top 10 video of all times. If you're interested in that, uh, that went live today. That is on the channel now. Please go and check it out and leave me a comment on the video. Um, that is the top 10 games of all time as voted on by my Patreon supporters with commentary from me about which games I agree with and which games I think are good. Uh, Too Many Bones was obviously today. Tomorrow, Maracaibo, 2pm. That is in the afternoon. Friday night, 8pm, uh, more Alexander Fister. Uh, I'm playing a couple of scenarios of Cloud Age. That's what's happening this week. Too many bones though, I will be back next month. So the, the second Wednesday of every month will be too many bones. I can tell you now what I'm going to be doing. I'm going to be playing another character from the core set. I've played Boomer, I've played Patches. I will be chatting with my Patreon supporters to ask them which one, which other character they want me to, to use. And I will be playing against one of the two tyrants that I haven't yet faced from the core set, which is... Let's have a look. It will be either uh, Gendrix or Gendrix, Gendrix or Gendrix, and Marrow. They are the only two that I've not faced yet. So I've played Mulmesh, I've played against Drellin, played against Nom, played against Goblin King, played against Duster. So yes, it will be either Tantrum or Pickett against either Gendrix or Marrow. That's what's going to be happening. Uh, and that will be the second Wednesday in March. Yes, how is Gendrix pronounced? I don't know. Who knows? Um, but yeah, for tonight, I'm done. Thank you very much for watching. This has been very much a roller coaster of a game with a little bit of an anticlimactic ending, but I wouldn't have done it without, uh, without you guys in the chat watching. So yeah, thank you very much for keeping me company and obviously helping out with the rules queries. Um, and I hope if you've been watching this, if you knew how to play Too Many Bones, you might have learned something too especially with the grenades of Boomer, which a few people were getting wrong. Anyway, I'm waffling. Good night. I'll see you next time. Take care. Proudly sponsored by Game Toppers, upgrading your gaming experience. Visit GameToppersLLC.com.